origin. And spawning top left as the blue Terran. We have the Cardi Terran himself. It's Medino. And in the bottom right, spawning as the red Terran, we have Gypsy. All right. Well, I kind of, you know, like we were saying, I'm, I'm expecting more of just like a two fact opener out of Gypsy here. Um, I like the ID King Theo. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that's funny. <laughs> but in uh, the other games, when they were when they were opening up the game for warmups, I just thought he was actually in the games like obzing or something. I didn't realize <laughs> it was a uh, it was his, it was Gypsy's ID. Uh, oh man, we got the cameras there. Look, oh, how sick the, is the that? Finger cam. Look at those fingers, man. Dang, so quick, so handsome. All right, this is cool. Ah, uh, look at yeah, Medina playing Medina in the void. I know, man. It's just pitch black. Like, yeah, he's just popping into our dimension for a quick game of StarCraft before he goes out to be, back to being a multi multiversal being. <laughs> yeah, he just leads back in his chair, like puts the the three D goggles on, and <laughs> the chair yeah. just ascends into the <laughs> ceiling, like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's man. funny. Yeah. He comes. Well, he, he occasionally comes to our universe for some Bacardi and for some Starcraft. <laughs> Just Bacardi and Starcraft. Uh, yeah, I you know I heard actually uh, when COVID first broke out, Madinio just drank extra Bacardi and became like eighty five percent alcohol, and they just went around touching people, disinfecting them. Ah, oh, I see. He's just put himself to you know. It's yeah. a good use, uh, disinfecting by being pure alcohol. Makes yeah. sense, you know? If only Europe had him for the Black Plague, then, you know. <laughs> yeah. It would have been better. Uh, would have been a better place. We just had Nostradamus with his stupid rose hips. <laughs> That's a history joke! <laughs> <laughs> oh, stupid. Anyways, so what are we expecting here from uh, from our two players? You said you're expecting rates from Medinio? Uh, I don't know actually. I'm I'm less familiar with uh, how Medinho opens uh, TVT. I was just saying I think it's gonna be two like a two fact out of uh, or a fact into two fact out of uh, Gypsy. But we'll see here. I don't know what Medinho's gonna do here. It looks pretty standard so far. I pulled the SCVs off gas. We see the factory go down at standard times. Uh, both these players pretty much just you know dead even so far in these builds there's not really a whole lot that you could do early game tvt right marines in low numbers not really uh you know a strong threat you can kind of just handle them with you know small clumps of scvs and marines of your own so neither player really in uh danger at this point until the first vultures come out add on immediately uh out of gypsy uh, meanwhile, it looks like Medinho going uh, Vulture first and looking to take a command center at his natural. You ever, uh, you ever seen a man murdered live on air? What? <laughs> I'm, I'm just asking because I'm about to uh, I mean, enter my hot take here and then get immediately destroyed by the entire StarCraft community. Okay. 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 All right. Oh, this sounds risky, man. Here, this here is like goes. when '80s bullet. Here it goes. Gosh, should I tweet this? All right. All right. <laughs> he does do that. For those who <laughs> don't know, he, '80s bullet messages his friends really risky tweets and then goes, <laughs> "Should I tweet this?" And it's always a no. It's <laughs> always. A, we're like, no, man. We're trying Why to would save you your do that? Career. Why would you do this to yourself? <laughs> like. <laughs> they're oh, funny, so funny though to be fair they're that's such funny. a relatable yeah, like... thing for all our little community <laughs> all right uh, but here's my take okay okay <laughs> starcraft 2 does the early game a little better <laughs> in that oh, the the starting worker count is a little higher so there's almost no like no latency between when the game starts and when something interesting is happening 
and then the chat went nuke. <laughs> I know, I know, it's ridiculous. <laughs> I know. What but, the fuck is Chuck on the thing? Look, look, okay, I understand. Go I back mostly... to Street Fighter. <laughs> you mother <laughs> There's gonna be another thread about <laughs> about BSL. BSL's going to trash. They just <laughs> they invited this idiot with these terrible opinions on to cast StarCraft. It's true. Uh, and I mean I understand like like there's Ooh, there's I builds that are this is important. Like we saw the four pool earlier, right? That was a big deal, but but overall I there there are a lot of times like especially PvP or just like oh they both got the assimilator at the same time. And that's like the big deal. I don't know. I do like yeah. the fast starting to, to get into action going. How did this Marine... What does he think he's going to do here? Uh, I mean, he's just clearing out that barracks. It'll, it'll happen over time. But, I just... Um, yeah, it's it's kind of cool. I think Gypsy's got a little bit of a lead here. Just killing off and, you know, shaving off those few vultures. Um, did, didn't, you know, it's not like he didn't lose anything for it there. He did lose a couple SCVs. Uh, but this, with no mines on the map, I think this is going to be a problem here for Medino. Yeah, he does have the one tank in the back, and the SCVs are, are kind of chunky boys. Uh, but that tank is going to have to do a lot of work, and there's probably going to have to be some serious repair going on here for this to be repelled. Uh, already a ton of damage going down. A yeah, ton of denied kind of mine tank, ton of dead SCVs. The two tanks still healthy, and the Vulture's able to follow up with uh, some nice reinforcements here. Who does have that mine buffer now. I think that's exactly what he needed to stabilize this. Uh, Gypsy will probably try to trade these two Vultures out as much as he can. Um, but I think that's going to be it, and this is where the line will be drawn. Yeah, I mean, that was pretty good uh, <laughs> overall, though. A ton of SCVs go down, a ton of lost mining time. Even, uh, you know, military units getting destroyed here as well. Uh, so that tank going down would have been insane. But uh, all things considered, that was an excellent attack by Gypsy. Yeah. And you can see those fingers still going, man. He's clicking away here, trying to secure this lead. I mean, he's got... Uh, he's about to do 500 it! 500 minerals. You think he's just going to go for it? Okay. Oh, the Marine. Oh, no, the Marine. I was yeah. going to say, the Marine's going to kill a building with a gun. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a fairly really sizable building, dude. I mean, it's, it's like a... Could you imagine going to, like, a Walmart and trying to kill it with an AR-15? <laughs> the actual building? <laughs> no. Not <laughs> even close. It's got to be some kind of crazy futuristic super gun, man, for sure. It's going to be American, like, the DOS rifle. Yeah, <laughs> just been going around with like shoulder-mounted like rail guns. Just this is what the founded fathers meant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Well, this is the nightmare position that we were talking about a little bit earlier. Uh, Gypsy with a very nice little contain here uh, outside of Medina's natural, in fact, which is actually crazy. He's across the bridge. Uh, which I know. Is even that... worse. It's a weird position to hold, but if he gets siege, it could be great. If he gets oh siege my just god. in time, oh my god, that was massive. Another That's... mine kills both the tanks. Gypsy's just gonna uh... walk in here with his fifty thousand vultures. Oh yeah, my god! He doesn't god. even need to move the tanks. He could just repair the tanks. It that has to be game. That was just too nice of a mine and siege tank shots. I mean, right when he had Siege, the timing could not have been more perfect. That yeah. was nuts. And now Medinho down, you know, 30 supply in a mirror matchup. Uh, does have a Wraith, though, so it looks like he was working towards Wraith. Uh, but that's just going to buy a little time at this point. Dude, wow. I mean, yeah, this is uh, pretty much the nightmare situation that we were talking about, but even more so. You can't even push up to take your third. Usually that bridge precludes you from taking your fourth. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is pretty rough. Yeah, he can't even mine it as natural anymore. I mean, Gypsy just played is... this so clean. He took no damage from the initial vulture attack, pretty much. I think he might have lost like one SCV. Yeah, but maybe one. Those mines were nuts, especially the second one. The first mine was crazy, right? You go out there, you take a mine hit. That's pretty unfortunate. But the second mine, they got the last two tanks, was, I think, the nail in the coffin. There was no way to defend now. Look at look at how little HP that that tank is just gonna die to vultures. 
Yeah, it almost. I mean, if he got a mine next to it, for sure it'd be dead. Still, I mean, even just trading for SCBs at this point, it, it's all good trades for, yeah. for Gypsy. He's got to recognize it. He could take his third right now. Looks like he's going to on position. Um, and despite not having any Goliaths, he's still just throwing units across the map. He, it looks like he is going to have to force to, you know, sit back and stabilize at this point. There we go. Goliath on the map now uh, for Gypsy. But once again, just a massive, massive lead here uh, for Gypsy. It is funny, though. This is that matchup where, despite the fact that you're at like a 30 supply lead or 25 supply lead over your opponent, there's still no walking into their natural expansion and just killing them because uh, that's the defensive power of tanks. Of course, we don't have a real answer to the race right now. Sure, they do like tickle damage with their, their uh, air to ground damage, but... It's still going, like, you can't just siege uh, out there and expect your tanks to slowly wear the opponent down because the rates are going to get advantage here. So now that we have Goliaths on the field, uh, we're going to start being able to push back and secure, resecure that contain. But it's going to take a while for Gypsy to pull this out. I'd like to see maybe some kind of dropship or something, uh, dropship play, but the rates do make that a little more difficult. Yeah, the rates are going to but make that a little more difficult. But, you know, because... I don't think you're necessarily wrong. Like, because Medino has been forced to just make units to survive at this point, his defense is going to be a little lackluster. There's no turrets anywhere. You know, his mine placement could be better uh, oh. just because he's been trying to, you know, hang on uh, this whole time. So a drop could do some significant damage here for Gypsy. And here we go. This is the positioning we were talking about before this game started. These bridges, once Gypsy sets these tanks up here, and once Medinho sets his tanks up on the opposite side, this is just no man's land. Nothing efficiently is going to be moving across these bridges for the rest of the game until that tank line is cured, uh, is you know, uh, moved or killed. So, uh, looks like they're setting up Gypsy already with a third base. Looks like Medinho might be considering taking his own. And double dropship out for Medinho here. Not something I was uh, anticipating, but it could be a good call. I think you do want to make kind of like more radical decisions when you're very clearly so far behind that there's no real way to outmaneuver your way back into the game. Like, I think Medinho knows that at this point, there's not like tank positioning that he can use or like some kind of clever, like, like I'm going to skip a couple things to get back in this game macro wise. Like, you have to make a, a decision here that gains you a radical advantage to kind of come back from such a radical disadvantage. Uh, unfortunately, flying your dropships right over the vultures is maybe not going to be the decision oh, is that, that needs to be made you, here. That's not what you do? In my sure. layman, look, I, I, again, I'm not a, I'm not a doctor because I'm a doctor of Starcraftology. I'm all right, I got my, I got my doctorate in holiday studies. All right, <laughs> but if I had to guess, this is probably not the 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 best way to do this. Yeah, you're probably right. I like he, this though. This is a cute position. It, I yeah. mean, he's able to siege that natural mineral line. I uh, have not really seen this, uh, but you know, after seeing this, I don't know why. Cause this is a great call here. Well, yeah. Uh, Tanks do shoot seven miles away. I was a little surprised the positioning of of uh, Gypsy's tanks because I kind of assumed that he'd have them behind the mineral line in order to stop this, since he saw the trajectory of the uh, dropships. But yeah, I mean, as far as as good as this could have done, it did about as well as it you could expect. He got some SCV kills. Yeah, it was that was pretty nice there from Medinho, and it might give him a little bit of pressure to just you know secure his own third base. Um, problem is once again i mean he is very behind in supply here uh you know i think he's behind pretty much every way he's uh you know economically as well as um you know his his force so it's a tricky position to fight out of here if you're medino yeah uh i do think that that dropship did one thing for him is and it really kept gypsy's tank count from getting up onto this high ground and securing this portion of the map for him uh, and that's huge because now this is two bases that Medinio can take pretty reasonably safe without having to worry that this is going to get pushed because you really only need to commit like three or four tanks at the most to the bridge and in like any army size is not going to be able to push across that because they're just going to get stuck on each other. 
uh, as they try to come across. So, uh, but Gypsy with races, 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 is races of his own. Races. <laughs> yeah, he's a real racist. Um, oh, <laughs> we are killing it today, Doc Holiday. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Oh, GG is called for Medinho. I don't think that's a bad GG timing there. Like he obviously just, no, not at all. He, ha he had to take a risk and go for like that double expo there to try to secure himself a better position to get himself back in the game. And unfortunately, it just didn't pay off. Man, Gypsy, you know, found that opening. Um, uh, but yeah, very strong game one uh, from both players there. Uh, Gypsy coming out on top, obviously. Uh, and looking like a, a strong competitor in this one, man. Yeah, I think there's also definitely something to be said. Like, a lot of people will say, oh, that was an early GG. He wasn't dead. Gypsy had him pushed just now. But there's no, like, you're at this point, you're kind of, like, preserving the amount of energy that you have left. You know what I mean? Like, do you really want to, you really want to put, e like, every ounce of your mental energy into playing out a game that is clearly, like, ridiculously disadvantaged? Uh, probably not, so I think it's a good decision to just take the L on that one and get ready for game number two. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's, it's uh, you know, a little demoralizing. He, you know, was in a pretty good spot there early on, but you don't want to just hang out in a game that you're, you know, uh, in a significant disadvantage in for too long there. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think the score is... Uh, it's April Fools. Uh, it's actually, yeah, Gypsy 1-0. There we go. <laughs> over Medino, man. Uh, but Medino still looking strong. I, I want to see him on a different map here, and I'm kind of curious what he'll end up picking, uh, you know, to, to face off against Gypsy TBT here. Yeah, I you know, I think that we could see some pretty nice stuff. I really like the double dropship call there, so it's clear that Medino's, like, mindset is still in a nice competitive place where he's thinking about good creative solutions the problems things unfortunately didn't work out for him game number one but definitely i believe that we'll see a nice strong game from him in this one and the map pick going to be vermeer here uh okay the map yeah. pick going to be vermeer here uh so yeah big four player map uh i think this is a great call i hope we get to a late game epic tvt which i think we're you know more than likely going to on a map like this between Gypsy and uh, Medinho. So uh, both these players hopefully going to be able to showcase a little more, you know, what they can do uh, in a late game scenario, which is always fun to watch. Yeah, I think this is also going to just, I mean, because Vermeer's like a much less, I don't want to say coin flippy, but like, I guess binary would be the, the word I would uh, kind of map where it's like, do you get your bridge or not? You know, there's no there's there's some defensive positions here, like the the yeah. like little high ground prongs stuff like that. Really great to put your tanks, makes it really hard to get pushed up there. But it's not like those positions really are cutting off the entire rest of the map to you. So, uh, timing uh, of like getting your tanks onto the high ground stuff like that, I would say significantly less important in this one. So maybe we'll see those those late game kind of plans come together a little bit more uh, for uh, Gypsy and Medina. Yeah, I I couldn't agree more with you there. Just, you know, due to the size of the map and the amount of entrances on this map, it's not as cut and dry to, like, quadrant the map off as a map like uh, Neo Dark Origin, right? We were talking about it even before game one started. Like, if you just block the middle and, like, the side pathway, like, turn's fucked. Like, you know, whereas uh, a map like Vermeer, there's just three, four, five separate, uh, you know, entrances you know ways to push out past your natural and third out onto the field so slip sneaking by vultures you know is a little easier to do getting an scv out to start a base things like that all right well it looks like we're just waiting on medinio to finish mixing his drink before we <laughs> <laughs> i'm not even joking <laughs> like, yeah, if, uh, for all the memes, uh, unironically, we're waiting for him to mix a drink before we I get mean, into Bacardi, the game. Bacardi, Bacardi, Taren, man, would you, are you surprised? <laughs> so awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. We are ready, folks. All right, Bacardi, Taren is locked and loaded. Uh, it is going to be Vermeer here, game two. Let's jump into the action.
boom top right spawning as the red Terran it is Medino and in the bottom left as the blue Terran this time we have Gypsy yeah I well, wonder I wonder if Medino uses his Starcraft winnings to like fund his like uh his like liver transplant <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's just buying stem cells off like the dark web. With all the <laughs> yeah. balls, like he's got like winnings. a bunch of them growing in like incubators. He just <laughs> it's he just got a they're zipper built in into his, his chair. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> oh, this one's out. We're gonna get a new one. <laughs> oh man, that's, that's too terrible. Funny. You know, it's funny. We got what we asked for here. It is. It's Vermeer, and it's going to be cross map. This one's going late. Like I'm telling you, this is going to be a long, long TBT, and I couldn't be more excited for it, man. Uh, this is going to be pretty cool. I uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm curious what both players are going to kind of open with here. That I shouldn't. I don't expect anything like a two port wraith from either player. Anything like mega risky like a, a forward eight racks um but yeah i don't know we'll have to see um as i say that there's a forward 11 racks 10 racks uh there looks like for gypsy so um yeah i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> I, don't know, this is, I, I like this man getting uh getting a uh getting i i assume that this is just for the expansion that he's gonna wall us off so he doesn't get run by by vultures yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, it's, I guess it is more defensive, um, just to kind of prevent those run bys, wall off the natural a little more. So, yeah, uh, pretty standard timing. Looks like both players getting their gas uh, around the same time as well. Yeah, I just feel like, what are you gonna do with like a marine across the map? He's got SCVs, bro. He's just gonna get bullied, man. It's like sending the banner to pick on the football players. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Both players' gases are identical. So. These yeah. Marines, man, they're just little manlets, man. Like five foot eleven walking across the map. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, compared uh, to the SCVs for sure. Yeah. Uh, so SCVs are six six two hundred and eighty Chads, bro. Yeah, they're they're big boys, man. The linebackers. I mean they're especially in this matchup, right? Like about one of the few things you see run into tank lines are groups yeah, of SCVs. Exactly. Like, like, we're coming, boys! <laughs> Shoot me in the face! I dare you! <laughs> they really are. Yourself. <laughs> Dude, the, the tanks are the quarterbacks. Like, as soon as anything touches them, they explode. But the SCVs, they're the real tanks, dude. Yeah, they, they really are, man. Uh, if I see a handful of, you know, SCVs and two Marines walking towards my base tvz early game i'm afraid of the scvs man <laughs> dude you know what i don't get is i don't get how people didn't just die to scvs in like the early parts of starcraft where like no one knew what the hell was going on and how to play the game almost got the because the command center time in there i feel like the scv rush would have just uh, murdered everyone i mean if a good player was executing it yeah for sure I mean, no one had the control back then. That was That's true. That's really true. No one knew how to micro. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I uh, still don't know how to micro. Starport it's, out of it's true. Uh, Medinho this game. <laughs> Did you guys, uh, I don't know if anyone noticed, but Medinho's uh, ID is Mad Tato, and he's wearing a shirt that says, I don't know, I'm just a potato. <laughs> I. I I actually didn't realize that. I had some glare on my screen. I didn't realize his ID was Mad Tato. That's funny. I, I love that he I has mean, a shirt potato. to go with his ID, bro. With his ID. That's so man, sick. Is, dude, he's he's in 2055, bro. bro. Yeah, that's he drip, so, man. so, so many. That's dude, drip. The man. rappers the rappers are jealous of my genius. Oh my god, the missed shots! What is I going cannot on? believe this, dude. That was, that was so the many The Marines are going to beat the... the don't lose the vulture to a marine, oh dude. Oh my god! Go he kill it! He should just go. He should just go kill it. Should, that was insane! Should, it's worth risking the marine for the weak vulture. Yeah, that was like I three or four that. missed shots. Yeah, that was nuts. Dang. With that, Mad Tato, I mean, maybe in an advantage here? That's crazy. I just imagine that vulture must have been like cross-eyed or something. 
Just like, <laughs> yeah. he was missing all his shots, dude. <laughs> he was, uh, uh, what, a Star Wars trooper? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> dude. <laughs> like, yeah, he just misses everything. Fucking like Marines up there deflecting with his lightsaber. <laughs> oh, man. Well, need this the is, Willem uh, scream. Yeah, this is the Jip Cam, man. He's looking quick, for sure. I just don't know how... I don't know how these players play so fast. Like, even, like, 80s mullet even plays, like, at, like, 3-something. I just don't get it, man. I'm I'm almost 35 now. I feel like my hands just fall off my wrists. Yeah, you need to, like, just hate your fingers or something, I think, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know, man. It It's tough, man. It's truly amazing what a lot of these players are able to do, honestly. Oh, that's gonna be a cloak wraith. Oh, it's gonna get scouted though. Gypsy, too good. I can't believe that. The heads up to scout that, and he didn't even see a wraith, so he's just sharking with this barracks. And with that, now we're seeing, yep, armory going down here. No eBay though, but so it looks like Gypsy's gonna need to try to hang on with just a couple marines uh, until a Goliath is on the field. Uh, meanwhile. Oh, we're seeing Medinho, uh or Mad Tato move across the map uh, with the Wraiths. Oh my god, our TVT casting is getting roasted so hard in the chat. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> Look, okay. Us casting wrong still makes us better than you dirty Terran players, alright? Ooh, Cloak going down in the, the main here. Looks like some SCVs are going to be picked off. Trying to prevent that um academy from getting up so there won't be a comm stat um so yeah this is annoying this is annoying for gypsy for sure here trying to handle this um meanwhile at the opposite side of the map medinho did wall off that natural uh, very successfully versus uh the vulture pressure uh coming out of gypsy here two goliaths are on the field they just can't see anything yet it's a rush to get this comm stat up there we go both comm stats going to drop uh Wraith's continuing to do damage here. I mean, this is uh, this is really annoying. This is looking great here for Medinho. It's kind of it just... ridiculous how strong the, uh, the damage done was, or how what good the damage that was done was uh, here with how ridiculously weak the Vulture is as a unit. But just good timing, you know, well thought out build order, and you can do a lot of stuff within in Brood War. Yeah, yeah, it's true, man. Looks like finally Gypsy taking his gas here at the natural. Uh, so that is going to be two gases being mined. Um, Medinho only one on gas at natural, uh, unfortunately. So it might be a little behind on that. eBay going down here for Gypsy, trying to counter this uh, uh, Cloak Wraith play. And yeah, this is just a weird point where, you know, both... Uh, Players once again kind of having to give up map control just because Gypsy has mines out on the map, so there's no way Medinho is really able to move uh, the brunt of his tank force past this mined line. Ooh, Medinho getting a quick uh, dropship after showing Cloak Wraiths. I like this. This could maybe do some damage. Looks like he's aiming to drop in the main here uh, of Gypsy. Gypsy's shown some really good uh, awareness so far. Look at that. The eBay is going to be floating out here and potentially catch this drop. Yeah, he might. And he's harassing the natural, trying to distract at the same time. Oh, it looks like dropship's a little behind there, actually. But now starting to move in towards the main. He has been bringing attention, though, over the natural. There's no units right now in the main at all to deal with this, so they're going to have to come all the way up the ramp. That's going to be a lot of time for the units in the dropship to deal some damage here. Looks like it's going to sneak past. Or... Oh my god, doesn't even get seen as wow. it's unloading. Oh, and there perfect. we go. Four vultures and here. Here we go. What? This is going to do significant damage here. Uh, no mines being placed. He's just gunning straight for SCVs here, but he's forcing a pull, uh, full SCV line pull um, after already eliminating quite a few uh, SCVs. And actually, Gypsy was planning on moving out at the same oh time. Oh my He's gosh. Forced to stall that. Wow, look at the movement, man. 
Odinho showing what's up and why he's here. And he did some excellent damage there. Yeah, I kind of Still... thought those vultures might sneak past into the natural and just keep doing damage. Maybe put some mines down on the ramp so it takes longer for the tanks to come down. But uh, overall, still really great drop here. And now Medina is moving across the map here with his main army. Doesn't look like there's any mines or anything really available uh, to slow this push down. So this is going to be a great little position for him. Yeah, it sure will, man. Uh, still has the wraiths as well. Um, yeah, no turrets big... right now. Yep, no turrets. The only advantage Gypsy really seems to have, have at the moment is that third command center is already up and running. Uh, so he will at least inevitably start uh, getting some type of uh, economy advantage. And Dropship looking to maybe pick up a couple tanks here again for uh, Badinho. Moving once again towards uh, top left and likely uh, to go attack uh, the main or uh, third base of Gypsy here. Ooh, engagement going on. Uh, we have, wow, Siege Tanks starting to get surrounded here uh, for Gypsy. And yeah, it looks like Medinho with a pretty sizable uh, push here. Uh, but actually, uh, four more tanks alive here for Gypsy, starting to shave off the remaining tanks of Medinho. It looks like this is going to be the line set up. Yeah, it looked like the the push was going to go a little bit better for Medinia there, but the uh, reinforcing tanks did a really good job of stopping that. However, medina has got a really nice position just generally past the midpoint in the map right now, <clears throat> which is going to allow him eventually to expand uh, and kind of get more map control. But you're right, the that third CC for Gypsy really cranking along there. He's got a really great SCV count. Of course, the, uh, the uh, drop did a lot of damage there, but... That third CC is really making up for the damage that was done. Two tanks getting dropped here in the natural expansion. I don't think these are going to get very much done. There's already tanks here to deal with it. Yeah, man, that was uh, some great foresight there from Gypsy. Having that tank and turret in just perfect position, it really looked like to handle that. Um, so that was just yet another advantage here uh, for Gypsy starting to pile on. Still, there's no third command center. I'm a little surprised that there's... Oh, there we go. Third command center is at least completed. Uh, it won't go unscouted though. Gypsy has uh, that Marine from early game there. We'll know the timing of Medinho's own third and likely will uh, start pressuring him along to take a fourth base as well. Um, the big advantage right now for Medinho is gotta be uh, map positioning, man. Uh, his uh, tank line is set up in such a way that he's really trying to isolate uh, Gypsy to the bottom left corner of the map here, um, which, I mean, that's a lot of TVT is really just kind of drawing lines and uh, separating your opponent from bases that you can hold. Um, so very well done here from Medinho so far. I just, I don't know how relevant it's going to be because with, with all the great map positioning that he has, right? He's on Gypsy's side of the map. He has, he had mines up on top of that high ground there for a little while. He's not, he doesn't have the units to be able to control both the right side and the, to the north of, uh, of Gypsy's natural expansion. And then on top of that, he didn't really get a, any kind of economic advantage out of that positioning. Gypsy's now taking his fourth base. Uh, well, Medinio's just floated his third over, uh, from his natural expansion and started to mine from there. And I'm just worried that like uh, Gypsy's really not really been disrupted at all. Sure, the the positioning is good, but Gypsy's got his upgrades on time. He's got his bases on time. He's just going to build up towards that like really strong max army and start taking trades before Medina is ready for it. Yeah, you're. I mean, you're likely right here. He is, uh, you know, doing a great job finally of uh, you know holding this uh, more towards the center, securing that six o'clock fourth base, which is. Uh, better time than Medinho's own fourth base at 12 o'clock. Um, so things could start, uh, you know, moving up here for Gypsy here fairly quickly. Um, still no, uh, you know, extra star ports uh, from Gypsy here. Um, at the same time, it looks like, uh, wow, Gypsy might be going for a move out here. All siege tanks uh, look like they're starting to be on siege here. Yep. Scans going down. Vulture's trying to jump on top of the front of this uh, tank line here. 
and Gypsy moving in. Wow. Quite a bit of tanks here. Wow. What he an efficient play. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, no vultures with Mendinio's tanks means that they just get pounced on. They're busy shooting the vulture army while the tank army is moving behind it, cleaning them up. Didn't really even have to siege, only two uh, tanks sieging in the back there. I do like the consistent drop harassment here, but uh, we have three race plus a big line of SCVs to be able to kind of deal with this here. The tank's not even going to be allowed to siege up because the SCVs get right on top of them, so they're not going to be able to really do that big damage output. Looks like we're going to evacuate this base for now, but uh, the, the rates really are going to be able to clean this up no problem. In the meantime, Gypsy was really able to clean up that big contain in the middle. Yeah, still though, this is annoying. I mean, this is exactly what Badinho needs to kind of uh, keep his uh, you know foothold in this game. Six o'clock, not mining is a big deal. Uh, meanwhile, Medinho now taking an economic advantage of his own by having his own fourth base mining. Um, so, yeah, well done once again here from Medino, just making the most out of these drops. Yeah, it, pretty interesting that uh, the supply count has not really skyrocketed at all in favor of Gypsy despite his uh, earlier bases. Uh, Gypsy certainly has a little bit of a supply lead here, uh, but uh, not like anything crazy. Uh, especially considering how long it took for that third base to get up, but Medinio did get the fourth base up considerably faster, uh, so hopefully he's able to kind of bring this back to an even keel. Um, I but think this, this is coming. Yeah, this is going to be a devastating move. Look at the positioning. Already yeah. securing the high ground above that 12 o'clock. Oh, is... there's only one tank here. Yeah, this is big. Uh, wow. Gypsy making the most with his wraiths, too. I mean, the wraiths are really what kind of cleared the way, it felt like. Uh, for this to be possible here all the scvs go down yeah almost would have been just a better decision to get them on those three tanks there so the other tanks start firing on them and doing their damage and maybe take three tanks out of this equation here but uh you know medinio is likely hard multitasking you know you can't make every perfect mi micro decision here uh all at the same time but you're right the uh the race have done a really great job in helping kind of like push uh, safely across the map here. They're going to find some more tanks that they can push out down here. And Medinio now going to be the one who's contained on his three bases. Uh, a significantly, uh, I would say, more impactful time of the game. There is a fourth going to the uh, three o'clock here, but I don't know if that is going to be safe as we have units from Gypsy pushing across the map to stop that as well. We have three siege tanks here, but a whole heck of a lot more coming up here from the south for, with Gypsy. Vultures getting in front of the army as well. We even have a couple Goliaths to deal with any kind of potential Wraith play. And that immediately gets taken care of. I wonder if Gypsy's even going to be able to take the high ground here. That would be a really excellent like position it. for the tanks to get in. Yeah, it really would be. Man, suddenly everything just kind of turning on its head. It feels like Gypsy just has so many units. Yeah. He is up about 45 supply-ish. I'm having a hard time seeing past the, the Discord overlay, but yeah, around 40 something supplies. So this you see is gonna be canceled and then, yeah, that's that's gonna be a two base mining uh, Medinio versus a infinite free map space uh, Gypsy now. Gypsy's even taking top left corner, both natural and main. Uh, so he's going to have unlimited, uh, unlimited production coming up here in a minute. For sure, man, I mean, that's some confidence dropping you know both bases at the same time here he's starting to just kind of snowball with pure economy uh these rates are being annoying once again for medinho that, that's been a constant for him uh throughout this uh game uh but yeah it's gonna force a reaction out of gypsy but still i mean yeah. really really tough spot Gypsy did have some Goliaths down in uh, that bottom right army, uh, but uh, these are actually doing crazy work. Uh, <laughs> a whole bunch more Wraiths now are joining the party. So these tanks are suddenly starting to get picked off very quickly. Uh, I still don't know if this is really going to be enough to make the difference here, but uh, it's definitely getting his mining back for now. Yeah, it's what he needs for the moment. At least it's clear in a space to take uh, 12 o'clock again. But, you know, TVT, you don't really want to have to dedicate all your resources to Wraiths. They are flimsy. They're made out of paper. And, you know, Bedino's pumping out a three port at the moment. Um, so I think it, now that the Goliath numbers uh, have been buffed so much here for Jip, the, the almost all trades are going to start being inefficient here for Medino. 
Yeah, they're they're really great when you first show them, and then Gypsy's gonna make his like one control group of uh, Goliaths, like you see now, and then they're going to be not so so helpful. Here we go, though. Finding another place with very few of these Goliaths here. These tanks are going to go down, and once again, Medina is going to probably be able to secure this 3 o'clock base now. So there is a drop at the 6 o'clock, I believe, as well going on. So lots of stuff. Oh, those are just mines. <laughs> yeah, they've been there. I was going to say, what the heck? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah just, weird. there's a lot going on. Um, but yeah, Medina doing a really good job playing from behind and finding little creative areas to get a lot of damage done. The uh, the race have really gotten a ton of tank damage done as well, but Gypsy, I would almost say Gypsy's about to really kind of close the noose around his neck because he's about to hit max, and so at that point Gypsy doesn't re even really care that he's losing tanks because he's going to be able to replace them instantly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, we're seeing the big SCD transfer like from the main from the natural. He's gonna he's already mining so much more efficiently. He can just kind of afford to take these poor trades. It won't hurt him at all. Like, uh, yeah, he's I mean just playing so well with a lead. Like he knows how to play with a lead too. It's great. Yeah, it's it's interesting how much value though Medina has been able to get out of these races. Uh, they're just consistently doing a ton of damage. Um, I think it is a mistake to like get too invested into dealing with them though uh you still focus if you focus too much on dealing with them with like just huge amounts of goliaths and you're you, you become very vulnerable to not having a very strong actual ground army but medina's just been very creative with the, the moves that he's making but this is going to be something else man yeah there are no hurt. units here yeah this is gonna be a yikes moment there we go tanks unloading here for jip quite a few goliaths as well this is not going to be cleaned up with a simple wraith uh you know group or something like that this is big big damage once again from jip even grabbing some transferring scvs scans going down for both players and yeah uh this is a tough spot man it's just a tough spot no other way to look at it here for medinho yeah medinho can't even really get tanks into position there because the choke is being guarded by that high ground We do have Medino, SMS. Oh. Yeah, he's trying to secure bottom right here, but yeah, having a tough time doing it. Gypsy already all over it. He realizes this is the one quadrant left. He's got to fully secure and starting to put the units towards it. Yeah, TVT is one of, is a really cool matchup. I think the the existence of Scan in this matchup specifically is pretty cool. Like it does suck when you're when you're playing like an like an asymmetrical matchup, right? Where like they have Scan and you don't. It does. Yeah. It's not fun to play against, but in this matchup, just constantly being able to watch what your opponent's doing and check for for bases, stuff like that. Like the mental stack on these players is immense because there's so many things that they could be doing right now, uh, and the fact that like Gypsy is able to just immediately uh, see that Medina is trying to secure that base is insane. All right, yeah. here come the rates. Oh, big dropships. Are these? Are these? These got to be full, right? I hope so. Yeah, they. Uh... Oh. Guess not. They, they might be still full and just trying to kill two bases at the same time here, top left. And yeah, that that might be it. There's no tanks over here. Starport's oh my starting gosh. to go down. Huge big, drop. Big drop. I mean, at the most important time here too. With the Wraiths as well in tandem, this is suddenly a bizarre uh, position to be in here for Gypsy. He's likely going to lose both these top left bases. Yeah, what a, what a awesome tool. Both our players now really transitioning into these dropships because it's like the best way to really be aggressive here. Unfortunately, Gypsy's going to unload here and find that there's nothing really here. I think leaving some tanks up here would be a really great way to uh, make it so that way Medinio can't recover and get in these bases uh, and get his economy back on track. Uh, but unfortunately, that he doesn't find really too much damage here in the immediate sense. Yeah, unfortunate, but at least it's another base that he can control himself for later. Um, you know, so eh, it's not like it's wasted effort or anything. Um, but, oh, this is big, though. This is too many units to just be losing. Unfortunately, once again, Gypsy just being caught a little off guard here. Uh, Medinho, I mean, he might even be able to break through mid-left at this point. Gypsy going for a counter of his own, but that is a big uh, tank rally here. 
from Medinho outside his own natural. Wraith's doing some damage here mid left, and Gypsy bringing in uh, some Goliaths to try to handle it. But still, yeah, good damage here once again from Medinho. This is a crazy, uh, you know, comeback because Medinho is definitely not in a great spot here. Uh, not too long ago. Yeah, I, dude, the the creative wraith and draw play has been really uh, coming in clutch here for him. Dude, I yeah. can't, I can't wait for a tank to like walk to this this six o'clock base and then just eat those two mines. I know. I've, I've, <laughs> I've been watching them since like, I noticed. My heart. Them. Yeah, it, it, yeah. I can't like look away from it, right? Like, it's just it just takes one or two tanks and then everything could go wrong over there. <laughs> so much potential energy. Big drop here from Jip on the last, I mean, really the second to last mining base here uh, from Medino. Didn't get to lift it off and save the command center either, so it's pure damage. What uh, a game. This, yeah, Gypsy, man, he's he's starting to stick the knife in. So, uh, yeah. I, in my games, I was getting this place where when you get to this really late game, both players have so much just raw damage on the field that it can be hard like to really establish any base because anytime you're trying to get somewhere secure like just an unbelievable amount of units can roll in and and take you out oh no this is horrible though Ooh, yeah very nice pickup there from medinho just having wraiths in the perfect position to uh stop that continuing drop force yeah, I was gonna say, it's, like both players really struggling to be able to be aggressive with their dropship play, and then also keep to their mine. brain in the game. We're a twenty-five to, minute game. Yeah, to defend. And Gypsy's mining a base. It, it, this is bizarre. Yeah. Medino mining a base. It. I mean, they have just crushed each other's economies. Uh, it's crazy. Here we go, Gypsy moving in, but it is tanks on a high ground. I don't know. I'm uh, I'm a little skeptical about this one, but I, he might end up clearing it. Yeah, it's a, it's a, he came in from a really good wow. angle, so the tank damage is really spread out. So really nice little engagement there. But look at this, like there's just action going on all over the map right now. Both players being really taxed. The, the difference though, of course, is that Gypsy's got the mining still, so he's continuing to uh, produce units. Medinio has he's got, money. He's got the wraiths, man. That's what Medino's got. Like, he just keeps finding damage with those wraiths. Oh, well, I say that, and then a couple of them died. Is that a, um, is that a CC in the top left? I just don't know what his plan is going to be. It's just mines. Like, he's got to lift a command center and take a yeah. he's, I think he's got to take 12 o'clock would probably be his best with option. His just lift the natural command center, yeah. yeah. Um, well, I mean, he's got so many tanks dedicated bottom right there, too, that you gotta, if you're gonna leave the tanks there, at least get a command center there. Yeah. Oh, man. Gypsy, though, on CG, moving in. GG, well played, is called here from Medino, and Big Gypsy gonna move on to the winners uh, of Group E here uh, to face off against Zhao Shui. But, man, what a crazy series there. Yeah. yeah, it did. It certainly did not look like that game was going to be super exciting or anything like that. I thought from kind of like that after the early game there, like right when we're moving into the mid game, that Gypsy just had such a great lead. He had the third up. Uh, he was quote unquote contained, but he didn't really need to expand anymore. It didn't take any damage from the early uh, vultures. I thought he was just looking great to be uh, to kind of just crush uh medina right away but medina with such great creative movement of his units and use of the the race and stuff like that really made that quite the game yeah he definitely did i like the the race and the walling simultaneous uh early on at his own natural prevented the vulture pressure from uh jip and you know he was able to kind of get a cool little lead off of that early on uh, unique drops. I mean, both that in game two and in game one on Dio Dark Origin, we saw that natural drop that was nice. Um, so yeah, man, uh, get to see some pretty cool stuff out of him. Uh, fortunately, you know, even though uh, Medinho lost here, at least it's a, some warm-up practice TBT for the losers match, uh, where he'll be facing off against Radley. Um, but yeah, next up, uh, folks, we're gonna have our winners finals. I believe it should be. Uh, Zhao Shui facing off against Gypsy here in an epic TBZ, and this is gonna be great. Yeah, I, I'm still, I'm actually, 
usually not a huge fan of TBT, not a lie. Uh, it can be very passive uh, and very slow. But I was so impressed with how both players played that last game, man. Uh, the amount of multitasking and stuff like that was going on uh, really showed that both players were really good. But I, I swear, man, dude, Gypsy's brain is just, it just works faster than other people's brain. Like, he seems to be able to keep track of, like, everything that's going on. Uh, and it, it just seems so hard to outplay him. Even though Medino did an excellent job uh, with both the drops and the rate play and stuff like that, constantly pushing Gypsy to be working uh, different parts of the map at the same time. Like, it was so impressive how he was able to handle all of that at the same time and, and come out with the win. I mean, absolutely, man. He... I think anybody who's anybody in the scene right now would say Gypsy's looking in top form. Uh, he is a contender to uh, BSL champion uh, type material. He, you know, I, you know, obviously I played plenty of games with Gypsy, and I can tell you, I don't think anyone else in the scene really has better vessel control in the TVZ matchup, right? Like he's never letting his vessels get plagued he's constantly pressuring you know on cooldown hitting those irradiates the second he can and it's uh it, it's uh it's daunting to deal with you you know that the clock is ticking as a zerg and everything's you know lighting on fire <laughs> radioactive fire around you and you gotta really you know stay on top of it even just to stay in the game so uh i'm very excited to see how uh a zerg the caliber of uh Zhao Shui is going to deal with that. Um, but yeah, folks, we're going to go to a quick break here before we get started. Uh, you know, thanks again for tuning in so far. Uh, don't go away. We'll be back in just a few minutes.
Hello and welcome back everyone to BSL 18 Group E. Uh, I'm Machine, joining with me is Doc Holiday, and up next we have our winner's finals match. It's going to be Zhao Shui facing off in a Zerg vs. Terran versus Big Gypsy, and game one going to be on Apocalypse. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, this is a matchup that has a Zerg in it, so I'll have a vague idea of what's going on and the names of the units and all that. It's always you know? nice. Yeah. yeah, well, that'll be cool. <laughs> uh, I'm sure the chat will still be really mean to me, though, so there's that. But uh, good news, you know, I've got a Home Depot right down the way, so I can I also have a really good source for stuff like rope and bleach and stuff uh, for my <laughs> aftercast rituals. Uh, so... <laughs> But uh, no, really, really excited. ZVT, I think, is it's got to be like most people's favorite matchup. It's the most execution oriented one where the strategies are going to be you, you rarely see too much deviation from what you're going to expect. And it's more just about the execution from game to game when we're talking about the the micro between, uh, you know, the units uh, either the mutilists or your micro against the mutilists uh, that plays a huge role in it. For sure, uh, man. And... Like it's like the you know like the the marine bio medic versus muta skirmishes are an easy way for top players to really separate themselves. You know, you can it's the one matchup where it can just end mid game if a big bio ball hits you know a base before sunkens are up or before lurkers burrow in time or vice versa. A good control group of mutas could just chew through a base, eat turrets, you know, pick off medics and end a game very early on. Um, but, you know, uh, when you see two players that are at this level, like, uh, you know, so such a high caliber, you will occasionally get those games that do stabilize, build themselves into, you know, a late game hive uh, Zerg defiler versus, you know, Terran on three base, four base vessels, BCs moving out, you know, picking off bases, drop ships. Like it, it's such a volatile matchup, but it is so much fun to watch. Might even be my favorite matchup to watch, to be honest with you. Yeah, and... certainly. Uh, so it looks like we're gonna be heading to Apocalypse, uh, three player map. Uh, what do you? How do you feel that this is going to affect the, the matchup specifically? I think it's a great map for Zerg. It's one of the few maps where you'll see Zergs even go mid-game drops, uh, just because of how exposed those mains are and how Terrans don't tend to even like you know expect it. At the same time, it's hard to even tell what Gypsy's going to open with here. It could be Bio, could be Mech, likely Bio, um, which always will play a factor here. But I, I think a great map for this matchup. Uh, with that, both our players are ready to go, folks. Um, so let's jump into game number one here of our winner's finals. It's going to be Big Gypsy facing off against Zhao Shui on Apocalypse. And spawning bottom left here, uh, bottom right here as the blue Zerg, uh, we have Zhao Shui. And in the bottom left, as the Red Terran, we have Gypsy. I like how we're basically just watching the Gypsy stream because Zhao Shui couldn't get we couldn't get his uh, webcam through, unfortunately. It, it almost looks like Gypsy's just the obs in the game, you know, and he can kind of see everything. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, Man, I, I wonder how much Gypsy's former experience as a Zerg main plays into informs his play anymore. Um, I'm sure like it, it certainly does. affected a lot in the, his early development, but do you think that it, he still has a significant advantage over other Terran players when it comes to his understanding? I think so, man. I'm not joking with you. I think it's a big factor of why his TVZ is so strong in particular. And I'm telling you, like the Vessel thing in particular is what I've noticed playing against him, that he truly separates himself from other Terrans. The Vessels, once they're out, he builds a lot of them. They're constant, and he never groups them. He will not let you plague them. It's really, as simple as that is, it's really annoying. Like, if you're plaguing Gypsy's Vessels, you're plaguing one at a time. And it sucks. Like, those Vessels just continue to add up kills over time. Um, 
other than that, he could do it all, man. Like he, his eight racks is terrifying. He can open fact play, you know, he could two port Wraith if he has to, um, he could do it all. But in particular, what I think he realizes the power of vessels and uses them uh, appropriately pressure. Here we go. Bunker even going down at the natural. I was not expecting this. Uh, yeah. So we early. love to see it. Yeah. Question is, how is this going to work though? Yeah, if he no doesn't drones pull it up drones in time. Yeah, I'm not seeing any drones moving across on the minimap here. So single marine going to start picking this off. The bunker will get up. Annoying, but only two marines going to be in the bunker here shortly. This isn't... Uh, he's making another bunker. Wow. Uh, this is crazy. I mean, that pretty much is guaranteeing he's committing to this. Um, so there we go. Four I mean, marines. We, or four zerglings moving down. Past. Yeah, we so, do have command center down, so I guess it's not too, too committed. Um, but either way, this sunken should be able to clear it up. This is a ton of pressure, though, to go down uh, this early in the game here, especially when we have the CC coming up already. And this bunker, the secondary bunker, is actually in range of the sunken. That's why he did it. So, wow. Oh, man. Very well that, done there. He's got to get this other bunker. Marines. Does lose two bunkers, three marines, and an SCV for it. So, I want to say not the worst position here for Zhao Shuai. Yeah, I mean, and those links are going to be helpful too. Um, of course, there is a wall at the natural expansion, but I mean, like eventually they're going to get employed in the mid game to help support the mutilists when the uh, bio eventually moves out here. The uh, zero is showing us the the. Uh, the Spire almost halfway done already, uh, and the CC just now finishing. We have a second barracks on the way and the Academy as well, so eventually going to be moving towards getting those uh, medics and having a bio ball that's able to contest the mutas in the middle of the map, but there's going to be a lot of pressure coming in uh, towards Gypsy in just a minute here, and I don't know if he's going to be ready, because I, do we even have... I don't I don't think I saw a uh, an NG bay for turrets uh, getting started yet. So. Yeah, I don't think we have, don't think we've seen the Academy, um, or there we go, Academy at least on the way. So hopefully with Medics and Stim, you know, he can hang on for a bit, but um, yeah, it's it's definitely looking a little questionable here for Gypsy, just due to how fast the Spire is. Now yeah. still, uh, you know, Zerg Eco, it's not like it was, uh, you know, not hindered early on there. Uh, only now is uh, Zhao Shui really had you know good saturation at that natural, um, and mutas are starting to be produced. Looks like it's at least going to be five uh, to kind of kick things off here. Uh, but as you said, no no uh, eBay I believe up uh, quite yet. So you know those lack of turrets could uh, really be an issue here for Gypsy. Yeah, the turrets need to essentially start as the the mutilus eggs are being morphed. Otherwise, they're not the turrets are not going to be in time. Uh, and the my main concern is is kind of because of all those zerglings. There could be a lot of pressure going on at the front wall with the zerglings, whilst the mutilus are in the natural or in the main doing their damage. <laughs> and look at this, the mutus coming in before the uh, before no the way. turrets have a chance to get up here. But we get have somatic. Gypsy moving across the map, anyways. That was huge picking off the only medic there for Gypsy. Gypsy going to move up across the map. Anyways, oh, the turrets get up. He's okay. There's one more medic, but still, uh, this is almost going to stifle Gypsy's push before it ever starts. You need to have more than one medic with a force like this. Yeah, and there's a, there's a okay. lot of units on the field here, but there's only how many total mutilists? Is that is it just those five or are there more? Because right, right now, those yeah, those Marines can handle this. No problem then. So Gypsy narrowly avoiding some dis some disastrous mutilus harass there gets the turrets up his units push the zerglings away from the wall and somehow nothing goes wrong. No third base yet uh, from Zhao Shui, but he is sending a drone out finally. So, I mean, once again, this eco has been hindered, but we are seeing drones being produced, uh, you know, at least slowly out of the the main and natural here. Third hatchery about to go down uh, for Zhao Shui. Uh, mute count up to eight. Uh, looks like one or two more rallying in as well. So um, he might have another opportunity to start striking the, the natural mineral line uh, with this group of mutas. Oh, barracks lifting now. Mm, 
I wouldn't be afraid of that if I was Gypsy. There's a bunker. But here we, oh, here we go. Only one turret at the uh, barracks inside the main oh, here. The production, so yeah. Ooh, he might even slow the factory down here. Yeah, it looks like Gypsy's just gonna go. I think uh, maybe he feels a little vulnerable. Doesn't feel like he can kill off this group of mutas. Yeah. Well, these things just gonna run past into the main and let's i mean the real question is this is going to be crazy damage at gypsy's base but is gypsy going to be able to crack the natural there's almost nothing there right now the mute is making their way back there is one very uh damage sunken but because of this gypsy's able to he doesn't even lose the one barracks yeah very well done there i can't believe that uh worked out so well yeah, Zhao Sui um, seems to keep getting units in what looks to be almost like a dream situation, but then he's not able to actually do any damage, and Gypsy's constantly being able to recover from this. Yeah, Gypsy's doing just a great job kind of hanging on from you know a bad spot. Bioforce does go down there. He's going to lose some medics for it. Um, and it's pretty clear that you know now uh, Zhao Shui does have map control. Gypsy's going to need to basically hold on until he gets that vessel count up. Um, because there's not really much else he can uh, do at the moment. Yep. Third is up, though, for Zhao Shui. He's going to be able to get his third gas uh, and then transition over to Hive Tech in a little bit. I believe the Queen's Nest should be pretty close to being done now. And this is really annoying. Uh, only one turret right now and a couple of Marines to save this production here. Uh, and yeah, unfortunately for Gypsy, he's just going to have to GG because he's not going to be able to produce any more units once that turret went down. Yep, yep, GG is called there from Gypsy. Uh, very well done from Zhao Shui here for game one, just, you know, making most of uh, that opportunity with, you know, those early Zerglings. Maybe that was an overcommittal from, you know, Gypsy with the double bunker at the natural. Uh, that's kind of what my mind's, you know, telling me at the moment. Uh, it didn't seem like it was really the position he wanted to play from, um, you know, going into that. But, you know, still well done from Zhao Shui to recognize the opportunity and, uh, you know, uh, kind of get the win, secure the win from there. Um, so big, big win there for Zhao Shui. Anytime you get the first win in the series, it's always, you know, just great mental advantage uh, going into the rest of it, obviously. Um, so I'm kind of interested to see, you know, where Gypsy's going to go from here, what map he's going to pick, what style he's going to go for, uh, you know, in order to kind of combat this uh, Chinese Zerg here. Yeah, I... You know, it was weird. I, I kind of felt like Gypsy was in a pretty decent position despite everything having gone wrong and, and multiple times. It felt like he almost lost his barracks. It felt like he almost got his natural, or he should have gotten his uh, main raided rather by the Zergling run by. Uh, but he somehow seemed to keep the fatal damage away for a really long time. Uh, and then, unfortunately, he lost his army across the map because he decided to make that push out there. I think that was a, a bit of a uh, uh, a rough call for him whether or not he wanted to just all in at the natural or not and it just didn't go his way because he didn't pull the trigger immediately at the natural so the mutas were able to get back but i mean clearly gypsy has the skills to hang here uh and so i i'm hoping game number two uh it's just not such a dramatic start to the game because i'd really like to see how well he does uh once you've gotten to a stable mid game and vessels are out yeah same here I, I and I know that if, if anything, that's Gypsy's strength. Like I'd really like to see it get there as well. The unlucky moment for me that last game was when the Mutas first arrived and the medic got stuck and you yeah. know uh, during the move out and popped towards the the Mutas. I was like, oh man, that's just gift wrapped. Like that's just too bad that that happened. But looks like the map will be retro. Uh, you know, very similar to Radley. Uh, great Terran map pick here for this matchup. Uh, I'm kind of excited to see how he's going to get this one done. With that, both our players are ready to go, folks. Let's jump into Game 2, Winner's Finals, Gypsy versus Zhao Shui on Retro. And spawning, top, bottom left as the blue Terran, the poster boy for uh, mental strength, it is Gypsy. <laughs> what an introduction. Oh, man. All right, and, and then... Come on, Striker, go to the... Sir, there we go. 
All right. In the, <laughs> well, in the top left, not on screen at the moment, we have the Red Zerg Yashui. <laughs> but our Ob's trying to show what's going on at the natural expansion. That was just a uh, dip yeah depot. Okay, cool. Yeah, standard wall off. Uh, I'd be very surprised if you went for something like a another pressure eight racks. Still though, these positions on retro Zhao Shui got to be feeling great with that first Overlord Scout. It's gonna give him a free scout. He'll see the wall. He'll know the natural and. A lot of times, Terran can't even see that Overlord. So, uh, essentially, Gypsy will be a little blind here, uh, starting off. But that's okay, because Terrans don't really need to scout in order to, to beat Zerg. You know what I mean? They just need to make units, that's all. <laughs> it evens out later on when they yeah, it's by def <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's, it's about a about a about a wash. <laughs> Wow, look at this. He saw the depot just in time, pulls the scouting drone back to make the gas. So, that was I sick. mean, his, his eco is like just perfect at the moment. There's just no idle chopping. Yeah, he's happy, man. It's looking really good for Zhao Shui. Still, though, Gypsy. We're back. Hey, we're back. We're back. All right. Looks like we have a layer down for Zerg here. Nothing out of the ordinary, just like we like to see. Uh, making his way towards that Spire tech, likely. And meanwhile, Gypsy getting his gas inside his main. Uh, looks like supplies are relatively even. Yeah, yeah, it looks like we didn't miss too much. Yeah, sure does. SCV okay. hanging out though. I'm going to see. Let's. I don't know exactly what the time on the layer is, but we have to imagine that it's far past that halfway point though. So yeah, there it is. So absolutely uh, guaranteed to be Spire at this point, or the world's latest lurker den, or uh, hydra den. So there it is, Spire at the natural expansion here, trying to just be kind of a sneaky little jerk. Uh, you know, like force your Terran player to maybe expend one scan to to confirm. That, that is the case if they're going to be particularly cautious but in the meantime it looks oh. like the stv oh he does get, i don't think he I don't think it was close him. it was on it was on the line there you know uh, in if that was the nfl a whistle would have been blown and someone yeah, would have gone, gone to the camera and yeah <laughs> uh, it, it is spire though it's a pretty well-timed spire and i gotta say quite a few drones already at the natural here for zao Shui. Double medic, Gypsy, not afraid. He's going for it. Ooh, okay. Does stop that. And that is a full wall, so two sunkets have to be dropped here for Zhao Shui. It's going to force some uh, SCVs to be pulled off to repair. Not a big deal, though. Uh, he just needs to wait for that one Marine to get down there, and that's going to kind of stave off this counter. Um, meanwhile, sunkets morphed immediately. Even the Evo Chamber going down to help wall off. I like that. It's a nice yeah. touch. But is he done it? Oh my god. He immediately he powers it. that first one down. And with two medics here, there's no way that this sunken by itself does it. We have the couple of wings now coming in here. Not going to be enough, though, I think, to uh, add the additional damage needed to kill a Marine here. And there well, it goes. Welcome Look at that silly to sunken. TVZ, folks. Yeah. And every, I was going to say, I was tempted to say, anytime I put my Spire at my natural, I lose it. <laughs> when uh, Zhao Shui said that, and he's going to yeah. lose it. Yeah. And I don't do it be, for this reason, because this timing specifically, it's so annoying. Those beaters are heavily damaged. I mean, 
Yeah, dude. Are you serious? Is doing it. Does he not get the spire? Oh my god. I, I thought it was not, gone. but it doesn't matter, man. The, the damage is yeah. done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a hope, yeah. man. Gypsy in a pretty good spot here, I gotta say. What a guy. What, what a, guy. a what a guy. Perfectly Just, he's fine, got some, dude. Uh, turrets at this the uh, barracks, I think, and he'll be fine. Big drone he... pull from Zhao Shui to his natural. Dude, if Zhao Shui could have stalled for even like like two seconds, the sunken would have been up faster. Like everything would have gone differently. I swear, this is why ZVT, in my opinion, is so so exciting. It's like literally you're walking a line on both sides every time. Whether or not your push is going to be exactly on time, or if it's going to be just uh, like two seconds too late, it's such a crazy matchup. The things that can happen with uh, with just how the how the medic affects the interaction specifically between all of Zerg's units. Yep, it's true, man. Like it's just such a volatile matchup. It changes instantly. Like unit positioning is everything. Timing is everything. It's it's crazy, man. Look, two Mutas already have fallen, and. Gypsy's bio ball just getting stronger and stronger. Uh, I think he's probably going to move out one here very shortly. Uh, I would, anyway. I think he can just pressure, and he knows it. Yeah, he's got he's got so many medics right now, and he's got a great uh, turret set up in, everywhere at his uh, at his production, at his natural, at his main. Uh, I don't think he's got, like, a significantly weak area that the Mutas can come in here and do very much damage here. Uh, and in the meantime, the more pressure that he puts on Zerg, the less of an opportunity they're going to have uh, to come back into this game. Right now, he's got the third base with the third gas, and that's really the going to be the factor that potentially lets Zhao Shuai back into the game once he gets to Hive Tech. So, I, yeah, I, I think forcing Zerg to constantly be making units and just kind of like throwing away your units uh, until you've got vessels is probably going to be a pretty good plan here. But looks like Gypsy is going to be playing a more conservative game. That was a big stem, I gotta say. He stemmed all Marines there for basically no movement um, from Gypsy. So, gotta watch out for that. There we go. One a Marine does fall. Ooh, one Muta falls, though. So, good trade so far. Oh, you don't want to do that, Gypsy. Does lose a medic there. And suddenly, things looking a lot better for Zashrai. Yeah, it's crazy how Mew Micro can just do that. Yeah. Oh Gypsy's my gosh. Just, he the needs whole to just group all those. Bio. Yeah. He kept too, ma too much bio in his main, it looked like. Yeah. I mean, he's got 800 minerals. You know, he could be dropping barracks. He could be. Uh, Get that up, extra part, port going or something. Well, it looks like he will stabilize his main. Now Zhao Shui in a position Ooh, where he can start pressuring uh, the main. Yeah, Armory going to go down. Looks like he was likely trying to get towards uh, Valkyries for like a mid-game Valk timing. Okay, good skirmish going on inside here in the main here. Uh, There's not actually, enough looks like here. Yeah, it looks like Zhao Shui going to come out oh on top Oh my god, here. the armor is going down. This is not good. And there's exposed depots here too. This is a really great place that you can just bounce glaives off of stuff. Maybe get some marines or some SUVs for free. Uh, and then of course you can always just literally pressure the supply. You, you know, if your opponent can't keep their supply depots up, they can't make units. Look at how many Zerg units there are here. And there's no, there's no vessel, there's no Valk here to add that splash damage that you really need in order to deal with this level of mutalisks. Oh my god, what an insane number of units we have coming into the natural expansion. Yeah, he's just going to take advantage of this now. Wow, just Whoa. dives right on top, but the Valkyries are just in Full time. timing! This can't be good. You can't just stack all of those. Apparently pieces. you can. Apparently I... Valkyries suck. No, oh, man. I, I think Jip just chewed him out right there. That was crazy. Oh my god. I It the... looked like for a second there to me, like he was going to lose that fight. And I was like, what is happening? But nope. The splash damage. Yep, just in the nick of time, too. Remember, he did lose that armory, though. So this is going to be a pure vessel transition. He's not going to be able to make another Valkyrie out of this. Yeah. Oh, doesn't get the shot. I think the marine count is is high enough now with how many bruised mutalists there are. Shao Shui is probably a little more hesitant to be really aggressive with them now. 
And I I mean, we keep seeing it. There's no transition planned here for Zhao Shuai. This is the problem when you just, you know, try to commit, overcommit, and go for an all in and say, you know what, I'm just going to make mutas. Like, sure, it can work a lot of the times, but uh, it has to work. Yeah. Because now, dude, as soon as that first irradiate is available, like, what do you do? All your mutas are, are already bruised up here. You're going to just lose them all as soon as the, the radiates happen. There we go. 75 energy. Irradiate Ooh. down. And come on. Whoa. I was just... <laughs> man. He just didn't wow, pull good that split, back. Though. Here we go. Muta's diving in because they have to. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah, and the good GG game. from Joshua. Man, he's really yeah. weathering the storm here. That's all he, he does, man. Like, he is so, so good at that. If Zhaoshuai tries the same thing game three, it's not going to work. I'm telling you, he's, Gypsy is too, too good at that. Um, Dude, that, that armory was up for like 10 seconds. It was like alive for like 10 seconds. And in that time, you got the, the two clutch Valkyries that turned around the super important fight near his production. I think without those, he's, he's completely dead. But, uh, Man, Gypsy, just playing that super, super well, really, really defensively, did a great job. Uh, and just, you know, weathered that mutilous storm, man. And you're right, it's kind of difficult once you've gotten to the position where Terran's been able to get off of Jess Marine and Medic uh, to uh, justify keep doing this. So Joshua was pushing the corner, had to all in at the natural, and he got ex just obliterated. Yeah, absolutely, man. Couldn't have said it better myself. Like, it's just what happens when you you commit, like, a committal to a muta timing like that can obviously be so strong. He was, you know, a uh, hair's width away from, uh, you know, obviously securing that. If those Valkyries didn't get out, if that armory went down before, you know, he was able to produce those, that likely would have been game. But, um, yeah, just well done from Gypsy to kind of weather the storm there. Uh, do what he needed to do and have that timing to hold that. Um, so now we're we're tied up 1-1 one, one here. Should be Zhao Shui's map pick. Uh, and, uh, once again, we're going to Vermeer, man. Everybody wants the, the big four-player uh, macro maps today. And I got to say, I'm, uh, I'm a fan. So this is going to be great. Um, uh, yeah, with that, I think uh, both of our players are ready, folks. Let's jump into game three. Zhao Shui versus Gypsy on Vermeer. And top left, spawning as the Red Zerg from China, it is Zhao Shui. And as the Blue Terran, we have Gypsy. Dude, I, I was watching on my second monitor the Muta all in again versus the Valks, dude. That that second Valk had like 10 HP. It was insane how close that was. Yeah, it was nuts, man. Like, I mean, the clump was just at the perfect time, too. If there was a couple Scourge with that and even just one of those Valks go down, we could have a completely different game. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, man. That was cool. SCP... Maybe gonna wall or make a barracks out front here. Yeah, it looks like it from Jip. Ooh. I like it. He's you know, he's been walling so far. The wall saved him last game too with uh while he was moving out with his academy timing. Um versus the four lane counter. So I mean if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It I mean I I think this is a good call here from him. Meanwhile, just standard 12 hatch here from Zhao Shui. Uh, moving out with a drone. Good pool placement that actually boosts that top mineral patch um, for Zhao Shui. So just getting optimal mining here. Really like that. I don't know. I think that's some nerd shit, man. That's no, some nerd know. shit. <laughs> Why are you trying so hard? <laughs> Try hard. <laughs> Optimized mining. <laughs> uh, what's this guy thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, a little bit of a skirmish here with the drone and uh scv here man drone definitely getting or the uh scv definitely getting the better of that though yeah it's for real that the scv got like tagged once and then proceeded yeah. to give that drone a fucking noogie man <laughs> it's just straight <laughs> mike mike tyson SCV yeah. it's just in there seriously 
with his lisp. Just he's like he's like get out of here. This is my base. This is my base. <laughs> pow pow. <laughs> yeah, you come back here, bite you off. <laughs> oh man. SCV gonna get a good scout off here in the main. Already sees such a fast lair. No zerglings. Uh, looks like uh, so far out of Zhaoshui. So purely optimizing mining uh, this game so far. This could be risky, right? You know, there's always a chance Gypsy just moves across the map with like four or five Marines. Um, well, we do have some units coming across the map now, but there's also... Is that the? Is it just a pair of links? Yeah, we only have a pair of links here. And look at that. He's staying far to the right, so that way the Overlord doesn't see the units come across the map. So this can be right really annoying. The line there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if there's if this isn't Zerglings building at the natural here, this could be bad uh, for Zhao Shui. Here we go. It oh, is they links. are links! But they doesn't are coming matter. out right in front of the Marines, Oof. though. Okay, force the pull. He's at least going to force enough. these Zerglings to move out. And he just goes home. It's so aggravating. I don't think they make it home, so... I don't know. I I was thinking this was going to be four or five links. Yeah, or, maybe uh, not with your micro, harder. Bryce, but this is <laughs> it's we're talking about. Uh, Actually reasonably him. efficient. He got two. Yeah, he's going to be forced to wall here with a couple SCVs. Um... Does have a couple marines, so he'll hold. Well, um, I gotta say that was probably better for Zhao Shui here early on. Seems like the supplies are a little closer. Uh, is getting you know pure drones from this point. Natural uh, Vespian geysers going up. Spire is well on its way. Uh, so once again, Gypsy's gonna be on the back foot here, and he's gonna have to force himself to uh, just sustain. Well, we, we see a drone moving top right. Probably going to be uh, next third base location here for Zhao Shui. Our OB's pointing out the extra drone on gas here. That's a yeah. little unfortunate. But those are the kind of things that can sneak by you when you're doing a million things at once. The third is down way faster than we have seen in the past, though, it looks like, uh, for Zhao Shui. Uh, yeah, it's a quick third base for sure. He really got, like, optimal uh zergling production there like he didn't overmake at all just made his like six lings and was totally fine at the net so he's feeling very strong i'm sure uh with the economy that he's got going on now i'm sure we'll see the sunken on time this time instead of just a little too late yeah we're even seeing him get it early even though there isn't a move out so yeah he's he's uh -huh. in a good spot we do have a down. bunker here though so probably going to be one yeah, I think it gives you some freedom to move out for sure. You might as well, but who knows? Maybe Gypsy might feel slightly behind given he lost those three early Marines, um, but who knows? Looks like Barrack's going to lift and go into the main here. Muta's already out. Man, that turret is uh, not going to be enough. I, I think Gypsy's going to be forced to sit back and defend his main here. Here we are. Ooh. Ah, not the best position there for the mutas. Yeah, they they definitely just started fighting immediately. Um, Ooh. Ooh. Nice. One muta got chunked. Nice reflexes. Gypsy's yeah, so he's, fast, man. He's so fast. And, I mean, just has the control down. Like, he instantly uses whole position or single targets. Uh, only one turret. This is, once again, just really dangerous here for, for Gypsy. I could see this group of mutas, you know, picking off a, a barracks here early on. Gypsy but... is going to push the natural though, and the mutas are trailing significantly behind. I don't. Is it, there's yeah the bunker? These links are going to get in again. Okay. Oh, but there are Marines on the top of the ramp, stemmed in, waiting for them. So that was well done. Oh, oh Gyp what a sick move forward! Ah, oh, almost gets one marine or one muta. There we go. Mutas are starting to fall now. Bio ball also falling, but that looked yeah. like a better trade for Zhao Shui for sure. Uh, we're seeing Zhao Shui even go up in supply now. So once again, he looks like he's just pure committal on these mutas, though. Yeah. Um, not that it's the wrong call. I, I mean, he looks like he's got quite a scary force. Gypsy really having to focus on 
you know, turret production. I don't see uh, a f the factory's not quite done yet, so we're not getting to Valkyries anytime soon. Um, it does yeah. have a Gypsy, nice repair on that, though. I think Gypsy's really making the concession here that Zhao Shui is going to be really committed to these mules for quite a long time. Um, you saw that he really got a bunch of extra charts near his production up a lot earlier than, uh, you know, he's been focusing on. So I think this is smart. I think Gypsy is just going to play a little bit slower. Uh, so that way he doesn't get blown out at this point in the game and hope that his late game is better. Which, I mean, based on what we saw earlier, that's kind of, you know, not a bad plan right like he he did get to late game he did hang on last game and it ended up being the reason why he won so uh yeah we'll see how this goes another turret going down here uh still though these bruised mutas taking quite a bit more damage and trading them basically just for minerals so uh does grab himself a medic there though that was nice um so yeah gypsy's still just kind of hanging on uh, I'm interested to see if he'll go with Valkyries once again, or if he'll gun just straight for uh, science vessels this game. Yeah, the big the big difference in this game is, of course, that Zhao Shui had a much stronger economic start this game. Yeah. Uh, and so you can see that with the tech that he has. He has, you know, he's got Lurker, he's got Hive on the way now. He has the Evo Chamber. Like, he's in a position where he can transition off of Mutalus. Whereas in the last game, he was totally stuck, right? He either wins right. there with his Muta control or he, he's screwed. But there is a whole other game plan here now that Xiao Shui has available to him because of that early uh, early game uh, economy that he had. Uh, but his Mutalists are still getting a lot of a lot of work done here. Like, he's cutting down this bio ball. Gypsy hasn't been able to pressure the third at all yet. Uh, lurkers are going to get up in time, I think. Like that. So th that is a really difficult situation for Terran to be in. If Joshua is able to secure the fourth, that's going to be a really difficult thing for G Gypsy to have to deal with. And we have a and ton I mean, of Lurkers on the way. Due to the base positioning, that the one good thing about taking that natural third is it does lead to a fourth, right? Like, he pretty much has a fourth security. He's got to yep. get a hatchery there. So... I gotta say, I, I agree. Everything looking really good here for Zhao Shuai, uh, in particular. And he's he's like you said, he's got lurkers this game. There, you know, there's no flimsy hope to just kill with Muta only. Oh. Is Zhao Shuai gonna be able to bait this entire pile ball into these lurkers that are on the on the hill? He's trying, oh, man. This he's is trying. Terrifying. It is a little terrifying. I don't know, though. I mean, Gypsy's got to be aware. It's not the first TVZ he's ever played. He's... Oh, here we, here we go. go. It We're might coming be. down. Oh. Ah, a little too far. I feel like yeah. he could have just walked in a little further with the lurkers. Yeah, pushed them up against the wall and then just gone at it, you know? Yeah, he's just being careful, being safe. And, I mean, why risk it, right? He definitely, it's a Zhao Shui advantage here. Uh, first vessel's out though so gypsy will start being able to uh at least get some kills here defiler mound already complete man everything looking really great here for zhao shui yeah the bio ball really not super big right now because zhao shui has been constantly taking a marine here marine there a couple of marines here the whole position micro you know look at this he's just cutting down the numbers of marines so bad he's forcing out so much pressure what a split uh, too yeah great split only loses the one Muta. That is so hard to do, man. Yeah, it's it's tough, man. I don't know. Looks like Chip gonna maybe start a radio. Oh, nope. He wants to go for Muta again. Okay. I think that's the right call. Ooh. Uh, that, well, you got a couple more kills. He almost killed. He almost killed the whole ball. Look at them. They're all like one yeah. HP now. Yeah. Yeah. So well done. Macro yeah, hatch and fourth base going down here for Zhao Shui. Nidus Canal as well. That oh. Third. Yeah, this is a very scary position, though. Like, the control is going to have to be absolutely incredible here from Gypsy at this point. We Ooh, have Defiler now. The Defiler! He killed it! I can't believe he killed that. That's nuts. But yeah, here comes one more, though. Oh my I god! Mean, oh, I thought he, he was about to snipe it. that one, too. Gypsy needs to start turning on that Firebat production here. Consumes going down. Four Lurkers in position to do oh, some significant no! damage. He got it. I can't believe he killed it, but still. Uh, this is four lurkers in about the worst spot you'd ever want them here for Terran. Terran's just kind of 
forced to sit here, hover over no man's land with the uh, vessels and try to snag irradiates as soon as you can. There are um, so many lurkers coming this direction too. If you, they're, they're getting at the bottom of the ramp now. What do you do here? This is nightmare scenario. You, he's got to go with this bio force. And yeah. I'm not seeing a defiler. There is a couple lurkers here. Um, oh man, he's got just enough to hold. It looks yeah. Like. The Crackling's doing enough damage with the support from the uh, Mutas and like the two lurkers there that he's just going to be able to... Wow! Yeah, GG is called there from Gypsy, and it looks like Zhaoshui going to take a very, very close 2-1 series, uh, which will secure him as the uh, the winner of, yeah, Group E. So, yeah, he will walk out in first place. Well done there uh, from the Chinese Zerg. Yeah. Yeah, I can't believe Zhao Shui getting that defiler to the natural was incredible. I, dude, Gypsy played so good. Like, you saw him stim with those like four Marines. He almost took it out before that uh, swarm got down. But then he just was able to, you know, get all of his lurkers down on that natural expansion. It was pretty much over. What an incredible play from both players, though. Gypsy, very close to making the hat uh, not uh, possible for him. But man, Zhao Shui is looking terrifying. His, his ZBT, he clearly has more than just the Muta Micro going on for him. You know what I mean? Like, that was an right. excellent post-Muta play. Yeah, no, it definitely showcased a lot more of what he's capable of that game. I gotta say, it made me, you know, way, way more excited to see him, uh, you know, move on to the next rounds of uh, BSL here with that. I mean, just such good control, such good poise. Like, the way he macroed out of those situations, too. Uh, you know, even the game he lost, uh, you know, really showcased what a, what a great uh, solid Zerg player he is. Um, and that's not going to be it for Gypsy, man. Uh, he still uh, will be in the losers finals for Group E here. Uh, and we'll be facing off against the victor of uh, Radley versus Medinho, which is going to be a uh, matchup we have uh, up next here. So, yeah, going to be TVT straight through from here on. Uh, through uh yeah group e here man imagine I, I must feel like gypsy felt like like he survived the mutilus right and he's like yeah i've done it it's like you're getting to like the the end of the boss and then it turns out it has like a second phase and then it, then now you're all, all of a sudden you're dealing with defiler lurker and you're like what the fuck i thought i won like I'm watching yeah. the I'm watching the push of the natural expansion again. It's just such a desperate fight, trying to keep those defilers to get from getting to the natural expansion. What a bad and, feeling. And he found those opportunities still. Like they were like leapfrogging from dark swarm to dark swarm, and Gypsy was still trying to snipe them. Like, I mean that is not easy to do, for sure. Yeah, man. I'm glad we have another Zerg final boss though, dude. Because. Uh, you know, there were some years, there were some years that I was like, man, well, we're just doing Terrans and Protosses for the rest of the season, I guess. So. It's just, it's another Bonneth BSL. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Everybody versus Bonneth and DeWalt. Okay. All right. Yeah, Good luck, no, Gandhi. It's great having Zhao Shui here to, to shake things up for sure. But uh, yeah, Radley and Medinho, once again, we got to see um at least a little bit of medinho's tvt here so we know kind of what to expect out of him i really was impressed with the the drop play versus gypsy in particular and uh he you know kind of showcased that he's a problem in this matchup radley though uh we saw him face off against zashwai earlier today um kind of excited to see how you know he, he might choose to open against a player like medinho um, I mentioned the nuking, right? And nukes are actually viable TVTs, so uh, it might, you know, be if if this goes to late game, we definitely might have an opportunity to see some nukes here out of out of Radley, which would be kind of cool. <laughs> I feel like they should buff nukes, right? Like they should make them cost half the supply <laughs> or something, because yeah, they're so exciting. Them. You know, they they're actually they really cool. cool, but they cost too much supply, and it takes way too much time. Yeah, they do cost a lot of supply. I gotta say, that's one thing. But um, I mean, they're still great, man. Nukes are. I've lost the nukes for sure. I've been nuked, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I remember like, like the old uh, nuke sunken bus strategy back when you used to just go pure muta and make like ten sunkens at a base. And I've definitely lost that. Uh, yeah. 
But uh, yeah, TVT, Radley Medinho, man. The uh, the Bacardi is it's out. It's ready. Uh, it looks like map one going to be on Apocalypse here. So three player map. You know we've seen it earlier today. Not in this matchup, but um, obviously holding the high grounds as important as ever on this map. It's uh, for this matchup. If you get locked into your three bases, uh, you can pretty much type GG at that point. Um, so yeah, kind of gonna be excited to see how this one. Uh, fleshes out with that both of our players are ready folks so let's jump into game number one radley versus medinho all right and at the 12 o'clock uh spawning as the blue terran we have radley I love these guys, man. No rush time. <laughs> <laughs> Remember what we talked about. <laughs> and in the bottom right, spawning as the Red Terran, we have Mad Tato himself. <laughs> I mean, just he was out fall asleep. We advanced. A walk oh over. my god, he's too funny, dude. <laughs> he's he's serious. You can tell by the look at his face. He's, I mean, it's a, tr it's yeah, honestly it's no joke a good strategy. <laughs> yeah. There oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> he made him laugh. <laughs> oh, I love it, dude. Uh, uh, I, can, I can see that. Gypsy's just like, what? I'm not going to wait for a five hour long TBT series. <laughs> 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 it will be uh, only our dirty secret. Love it, man. Love, love it. these guys. They're so funny, man. <laughs> yeah, nothing out of the ordinary. Depots uh, in the mains here early on. Uh, <laughs> <it's> like... <laughs> oh, that's good. We got a, a barracks going down in each of their mains, likely to be able to lift off after they make a marine and get some scouting done. Gas going down in both players' mains as well. Pretty typical timing here for TVT, so nothing out of the huge. Super Gosu Casters, Machine, and Doc Holiday. We're here like, with all the TVT specifics. I think the word Gosu is doing a lot of heavy lifting here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're not wrong, man. You're definitely not wrong. <sighs> SUV Scout going out for both our players here. Looks like Medinho or Mad Tato going to get uh, the, the... Oh, never mind. I jinxed it. I thought the SUV was moving top middle. <laughs> Looks like he won't get the correct scout off. Uh, but Radley will. That's messed up, that... Bryce. I don't know why you would do that to him. It jinx him? I don't know, man. Yeah. It's, it's just what I do. I always seem to find a way to make something wrong. <laughs> uh, looks like Factory going to get scouted here um, by this SCV of Radley. Marine being produced. Oh, try to get a couple pot shots on the Marine, just weaken it a little bit. Get him, SUV. Get him! Oh, he's got to get out of there, though. Oh, he's going for it. Oh, there we go. He's going to back off. All right, guys. And to follow the tradition of 100% accurate casting, I think that at this point, you know, Medina are probably going to make oh, a oh, medic oh, oh. to heal that uh, one Marine up. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, yeah. We need, <laughs> we need to get the optical flare. The optical flare to blind the other marine. Yeah, so exactly. They can't shoot him. Yeah. We're just we're just changing the meta. If you, what's the what's the one that restores like plague and stuff like that? Is it just rest? It's restoration. Yeah, restoration. Right? Yeah. I wonder if you shoot an opponent's stimmed marine, and if it you restore that them? marine, it unstims them. How funny like, that would be! It's like Narcan. <laughs> You're just like reversing yeah. the drug. Effect. Yeah, exactly. They exactly. just come down. They're like, oh man, oh, I feel <laughs> yeah. so much better. Uh, I'm not high at all. He's right like now. stroking <laughs> out on the ground. Too much stim. Oh, <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> so dumb. Uh, both barracks uh, kind of sinking in the middle there. Can we get some scouting off? 
they should give a uh, they should give the medic lockdown instead of uh, optical flare. Make this matchup uh, shake it up a little bit. <laughs> Just yeah, that's the patch after 25 years. <laughs> Blizzard's like, okay, we we've recognized medics actually need lockdown. Uh, man. Could you imagine Medic when... just locking all the Dragoons down? <laughs> it's just it's just Bio versus Zealots. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be miserable for Protoss. <laughs> uh, everyone's like researching like Medic energy to get like two lockdowns. <laughs> medic <stuff>. energy? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I mean, three fact here out of Medinho, so definitely showing pressure for a TVT. It's going to be uh, pumping out quite a few vultures here. Um, Radley is hip to it though. He's gonna have to wall off his natural and it looks like he does have some kind of a wall going with uh, port out as well. So Wraith now in vision. Uh, Medinho will know exactly what he's up against. No eBay yet, no anti-air at all, actually. Oh, come on, You have a there's a weak breed. You tar should have targeted the weak one first, but. Like Imagine gonna... having a plane and there's two guys like shooting at a building with assault rifles, and you're like, actually, they're too scary. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine being the guy building the eBay there. Oh man! Wow, he created a hole. That was very well done there from Medina. Wow. Uh, yeah, I. Gonna... The tanks just kind of letting these guys in here. A little unfortunate. Yeah, I, and that's big damage. This is a huge SCV pull does get cleaned up, but not before seeing everything, not before doing some significant damage. Uh, but yeah. Oh, looks like that's a, a armory being built as well uh, from Medinho, so showing he wants to get to Goliath Tech here as soon as possible. That Wraith just being so annoying from Radley. Oh, he finally gets his, his man. He's I mean, this, this is a good amount of kills here. That's, uh, I guess, only two. I thought he killed more. Um, still, this is really annoying. Uh, if you're, you know, Medinho, just losing SCVs left and right. Two Goliaths are out. Uh, looks like they're going to push this Wraith off for now. Yeah, this is like, uh, it's like Radley's Index Funds investment. It, like, pays off after, like, 15 years just takes forever to do any damage but it, it works out eventually in the long run yeah, yeah. oh oh <laughs> man i thought he was gonna lose it there and a lot of vultures out once again here uh from medinho placing mines in pretty critical locations here uh the tops of those ramps likely gonna try to block off this third as well but i mean uh, lost quite a few vultures there to that so uh, yeah, that's that's not a small amount of units to lose. Still trying to prevent any future run buys here from Medinho. And Medinho really just starting to get that Goliath count up still. Uh, has the uh, armory, but not researching weapons yet. Yeah, kind of an interesting a number of Goliaths for the... There's only one Wraith. Yeah, maybe he just doesn't know that. Yeah, I mean, I think that maybe he is just betting that there's going to be like a giant flood of wraiths or something coming eventually. Just maybe due to... that Part of the part of the thing about playing in the StarCraft community is that everyone's kind of known, right? Like you have right. your, your identity as a player and people have played against you for, especially uh, now, for many years. You know what I mean? So uh, maybe, you know, maybe we have a little bit of a reputational decision here being made by Benidio insight almost like oh man radley that, that guy knows he loves goes two port raids let's let's try to hard counter some mass raids right now yeah it, yeah it's like when you play against tai two you know you gotta watch your main it's just that's how it is <laughs> you know, you're not wrong wow a uh, bit of a, a failed push up the ramp here only two tanks survive yeah, it's kind of a big deal. He, at least he has that vision of the high ground. Maybe this is a position he can work from to, you know, eventually clear Medino. But um, yeah, as we were saying before, we're like TVT, such a positional matchup. And I mean, if you get locked into your, to the low ground on this map, it is such an uphill battle, literally, to fight your way back into it. Yeah, Medino 
in every matchup so far, been really insistent on getting his positional advantage on the high ground, stuff like that. Even sometimes to his detriment, especially in the series versus Gypsy, yep. uh, where he kind of gave up his economy to get uh, a contain. But, uh, I mean, he's got a really great position going here right now. Ooh, one tank getting sniped. Yeah, that was very well done there. It's only a single tank and a Goliath remaining, so he might choose to push this, but it looks like still more and more reinforcements uh, steaming across the map here from Medino. Yeah, I just, I don't know if there's even really a need. It's not, the tanks aren't encroaching onto that third base at all. Uh, and so I feel like if he just kind of goes the gypsy route and just, you know, hangs out on three bases for long enough, because as you can see, there's something towards where Medino might want to take his third, but so far no CC down. Uh, and look, just look at the count of units now that are here. All right, we're going to push up now and get the big siege. Yeah, Wraith coming into spot. One tank falls, two tanks will fall. And it looks like Radley looking to secure the high ground now. I mean, the other big advantage here is this third base, right? He's got a third gas running. He's got a third gas up. We don't see that out of Medinho just now moving an SCV into a position to take his own third. Uh, the tank count getting insane here from Radley. And yeah. as we all know, tanks are huge TBT. Uh, you know, oh, we do see a dropship though out of Medinho. That could be a second one even. This could be big, big pressure. Cloak for being researched, man. Medino. That guy. That crazy wild guy, man. Going cloak race again. I like it. I mean, it worked. It was definitely what was uh, keeping him in a strong position versus Gypsy. So, yeah, I, I got to say, I agree with you there. Yeah, I mean, he does. He puts the pressure on, and then that's how he gets his advantage. Now, is Radley going to have the same level? of multitasking and uh, everything that t that Gypsy uh, had when he was able to de eventually successfully defend all that. Who knows? That was an extreme level of pressure that he was under. Like the mental stack of having to deal with fights in three different places at once. You know, very, very high. Wow, that mine was very well placed there. And oh man, Radley just dove right on top of this. Holy shit, he crushed that. That was great. Another oh my tank God. in the mineral line. He's just prepared. It, it, not having turrets was almost bait. He crushed those drops. I'm I'm a little shocked here, man. Radley is starting to pull away in this one, despite mm -hmm. not having great position. Yeah, I mean, look at the look at the tanks on the high ground here. There's only three of them. Yeah, it's only the three, and now, I mean, Two definitely more. Radley's secured himself a, a great spot here. Looks like he's going to move in even. Uh, gets his own five tanks sieged up on the high ground. Do oh my gosh, two tanks just completely exploded there. These Goliaths can't really push up and help at all, though, because the, there there were siege tanks there on that little ramp that have been there since, like, essentially the beginning of the, the, of the game here. Yeah, yeah. But here we go, just more tanks now rolling up in here. Medino taking a fourth base now. Do a two port, second port uh, from Medino making some more rates. Uh, we do have a turret wall inside the main now. Covert ops, what did I tell you? Bradley, man. <laughs> That's so sick. I'm telling you, dude, he's, he's not fucking around at all. All right, well, this is the bulk of Medino's forces right now. There really isn't like a big rally hanging out back at the natural expansion. Uh, Radley really crushing through here now and finally securing his high ground after this entire time. And he is on base parity. I believe the CCs went down at like a fairly similar time. Yeah, it looks like it for sure. So, so no real yeah. rush to do anything crazy. Uh, just enjoy your little army advantage, I think. Eh. Oh, okay. Or we're going to push. <laughs> Only two siege <laughs> tanks right now. Or we're going right to keep going. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I mean, he just has such a crazy number mid. of tanks. Yeah, he really does. And I think when we're talking about staples of different players and being known for things, that's another Radley staple, man. Just so many tanks every game. Like a lot of Terrans like to do the vulture openers, not Radley, man. Like he really likes to get a healthy amount of siege tanks and just survive early on. So the real question is when do the rates get revealed and how many will there be by the time that they come out here. 
and where do they go, right? Like we already saw there's a good amount of turrets in the main. I don't know if that can really be attacked. Uh, maybe it's just to pick off siege tanks in the center. Like he could just kind of catch uh, Radley without having a whole lot of... Uh... Oh, he's going to have to reveal it now. Uh... He doesn't lose his siege. Oh, he's, he's going for the army. He's going to drop uh... all over him. I think he's... Going, going for the, the main. main. There's no way he's gonna kill that. Oh, I guess he's just gonna try to kill tanks, which is not a bad idea with this many raids. Yeah, oh, this there's so many turrets work. though. Yeah, he's that's not gonna work. Ooh, wow! Actually, Radley forced it back up due to uh, the lack of uh, air defense here. Couple raids. Uh, oh, that's not hey. a fight you want. Nope. Yeah, it's not gonna trade efficiently here for Medinho. Even without uh, Goliath range, these Goliaths able to clean up uh, quite a few raids there, it looked like. But still, that is Radley denying a fourth base uh, from Medina you know, while once again securing his own. Like, he has just been on top of his economy here, starting that fourth gas. Uh, you know, SCV count looking very healthy. Still has control of the high ground. Ooh. Uh, ooh, cute little run by here, though. Yeah, that's going to get a lot done. Yep, for sure. It, it's also giving Medinho info. Uh, he knows the timing of the fourth base. He can see the SCV counts, and he knows he's got to have to step something up. He's got to kill that base or secure a couple of his own. Dude, Radley playing very strong right now, though. I really... Yeah. I want to see the nuke, though, dude. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. We keep forgetting about that nuke. Something's being researched here. The thing is, uh, though, it's like m the nuke is usually good for like clearing out like entrenched like positions, but Medinio's the one who's coming across the map constantly. So I don't know if he's ever going to get an opportunity to really use a nuke. Yeah, I mean, it, there's not many opportunities to begin with for nukes. You almost have to create them. So, yeah, I, I definitely get what you're saying. Like, it's going to be a little tough here for. Uh, Radley to even find that opportunity, but sometimes just hearing oh. a nuke is all the guys one though. And Medino doing oh, no, a pretty some good the job cutting this off. He should just go in with the race, kill that final turret, and prevent the mining here. But as is, I mean, Radley's still able to mine this base for now. Well, Medina has got his uh, fourth base now up and running with a big transfer coming in there. Yeah, sure does. Huge SCV transfer, even. Um, Radley's still managing to repair and mine this base. Uh, oh, starting Radley. to move in with his own rates. Uh, but I think Medino's rates aren't too far away. Or, yep, here they come. Here comes and the he'll Uno win this card, one. Dude. Yep, exactly. Well, this is unfortunate. <laughs> okay, he oh. pulls out of time, though. Doesn't doesn't want to go for the Wraith v. Wraith war just yet. Two uh, turrets coming down going to be nice and helpful in this Wraith fight eventually, but... Man, race air-to-air -air versus their race ground-to-ground -ground is like a whole different universe of damage. Yeah, it really is. This is the fight that Radley, or Medinho should want, though. He needs to keep poking with these Wraiths here while he's got this base isolated. It's only one turret. Ah, looks like he's yeah. going back up, though. Oh, wait. He's, he's moving forward. Oh, wow. Yeah, it looks like Radley is moving forward, going to try to re-secure this middle. I mean, why not, right? Like, he hasn't, he's still able to mine from mid-left. It doesn't feel that urgent to try to clean it up. Yeah, and this is going to cut off reinforcements, too. Yep, so he can eventually starve out and save that base. Uh, I say I say that, and I, mining has been disrupted mid-left. So... Now, yeah, when I said he was moving forward, I was talking about Medina's tanks moving forward to, to hit the, the oh, CC again. Oh, so it was kind of yeah. weird. Weird timing. Yeah, this is big. I mean, this is big, big damage. Yeah, Medina in the meantime, too, uh, placing a CC, I think, at the bottom left-hand corner, getting himself on yet another base. Oh, and these rates, though. Yeah, it looks like somehow Medina is starting to pull ahead here. This was just big damage here, unfortunately. Uh, Radley's starting to bank quite a bit of money too. He really needs to just 
almost spend and throw units away just to re-secure this fourth to try to kind of stay in this one. Everything else was looking so, so strong for him. Bradley is getting a force, a pretty significant one down to that bottom right-hand base, though. And if these can get in position and siege up, that's going to be a pretty big blow to Medina's economy. Yeah, it really would be. Um, yeah, it looks like he's going to slip in just in time. He should have some units here that are able to kind of kill off these SCVs. Ooh, oh, big flock of race, though. though. Yeah. Oh, oh, but here comes Radley's race and with Goliath. If the race could come help! Yeah, if the race came, came in, They're on a smoke help. break. <laughs> oh, man. Still, Wraith count is looking even-ish. Uh, this could yeah. be a close one. Yeah, he, I think he turns around because he sees the HP on the race. They're really damaged. Yeah, one Wraith barely surviving from Medinho's side here. But still, I mean, a lot of SCVs fell. He might even unseize those tanks and just try to trade them for the remaining SCVs. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, Medinho still has this stronghold outside uh, the fourth oh, base. Oh, the OR! Oh, man. Here we go. Lockdown time, baby. Someone call for an exterminator. Oh, here we go. Big engagement in the center. Oh, oh that's quite Riley a few really outmatched. Are we going to oh. see lockdown? Ah! <laughs> we are going to see lockdown. Oh my oh, god. Crazy. Dude, what a legend, man. Radley locking down four tanks in the center here. That was sick. <laughs> and yeah, that's, I mean, big, big damage here. I mean, wow, that Bradley's... turned the fight around really hardcore. And look at that now, bottom right. Yep, bottom right, hurt, mid left, still kind of stuck. I, he maybe should have locked down the tanks mid left and resecured that base, honestly. Because uh, he's got to get something going here. I don't know what uh, Radley just spent all his money on, but he just spent a ton of money. <laughs> it was like 3k. <laughs> so so something's going on. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Dude, the, the ghost rifle sound is so sick. Yeah, it sure is. Man, what a chaotic game. And this whole time, Medina has got that base bottom left going. Uh, I think it's a base. Yeah, it looks like he's mining from it now. Yep, yeah, yeah. He is. So, I mean, that's, that's a huge boon for him. Uh, it looks like the CC survived bottom the assault from bottom right as well, just because I don't think anything shot up that was left, or was left there. Uh, so Medinho, uh, like, looking really good this game. Like, he really didn't, like, after the contain at the high ground outside of Radley's uh, natural slash third uh, got broken, it really wasn't looking good for him, but he's so persistent, man. Yeah, persistence is really the right word, man. He just kind of hangs in there, even if he's in a bad spot, even if things aren't going well. I mean... He is doing a is doing a great job of keeping himself in this one. If it wasn't for him stalling mid left here, I, I think Bradley had this game. And suddenly, Look at this wow, push. big surge of Terran here from Medinho recapturing this high ground outside Bradley's natural third location. Oh, Ghost goes down to the mine there. Oh, but actually, big mine connect on Bradley's side as well there. Quite a few tanks taking. Uh, so big damage, but Medinho now going to move in, going to clear that fourth base, going to clear the third base, uh, going to re-secure this high ground, and this time with plenty of Goliaths to clean up the raids of Radley. Yeah, actually a crazy game. Uh, Medinho just being just so clever with his pressure and positioning everything all game long. Somehow this manages to turn around what looked like a a pretty uh, a game that was pretty much in Radley's hands there to lose, and now we're at the double the supply essentially, and probably no hope left for for Radley, which is crazy to me. Yeah, looks like Medinho continuing to stream in units, raids, more tanks, um, and Radley desperately trying to stabilize this third base location. GG, well played is called. Well, wow, what a game number one. Yeah, that was a that was a serious one, man. Like I, I really thought, and I mean, obviously it looked like Radley uh, was off to a great start. Definitely had the supply advantage. I think composition advantage, defending the early drops from Medinho that did like nothing. He was prepared. 
Um, but man, uh, Medinho really had that uh, that nice pressure mid left, shutting off that fourth base, and just started to put Radley in an uncomfortable spot, and uh, it just felt like uh, he started crumbling from there. Um, but yeah, very very well done there, game one uh, for Medinho. Yeah, Medinho is just super tenacious and like totally relentless all over the map. It's so funny because it's like he's like, all right, I'm sure maybe not every shot that I take is going to work out, but I'm going to take so many of them. Eventually, I'm going to find something. And then he finds that base on the left and he sieges it up and it just breaks Radley's brain trying to defend that base. And in the meantime, he took, you know, he took uh, the bottom right. He took that bottom left hand base and got himself back into the game economically. Uh, it's just so cool how how. Medinio is going d does this multiple times now, and we're going to see keep working because that's just how he plays, and it, it just works out so good for him. Yeah, it sure does, man. He just finds those spots, right? Like that. That was such a clutch position uh, below that fourth, like right where nothing could come down that ramp. Uh, you know, front leading outside Radley's third, uh, down to secure that fourth. Like, and I mean, it, it just speaks to the power of like tanks defensively. Like they just have insane range, insane damage, insane splash. Uh, you know, they're they're great, great units, man. And it's, I mean, why they're such a staple TVT. So yeah, from here, um, with Radley going down 0-1, uh, it will be his map choice. I think no surprise here, we're likely going to see another big four player map where Radley can comfortably get into a late game scenario. Um, at least that's, it seems to be his goal. It just seems to be his style of play. Um, he did get to showcase the ghosts, uh, you know, with some lockdown uh, last game, which was pretty cool. I gotta say. Yeah, it was cool. You know, I mean, uh, effective, debatable, cool. I yeah, definitely. Nyokin always says it's not, but I disagree, man. Like, I remember when, like, let's just say TVP, for instance, it used to seem common to lock down carriers, right? You just get, like, five, six ghosts, lock down, like, 12 carriers. How is that not, like, efficient? I don't know, man. Like, you, you literally make them, like, sitting ducks that have to just sit there and die. Like, but you never see Terrans do it anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, it seems execution-wise so APM heavy. Like, wouldn't you rather just have a bunch of tanks just sitting up there, just blowing them up without even having to look at them? That's I guess that's the thing. And I, you know, far be it for me to tell you know someone what's good or bad, but uh, I just feel like sometimes you'll have this like idea that you really like that isn't actually good, and you may overcommit to using that strategy because it's like your pet strategy or your pet unit. Sure. Uh, when so much more energy could be just devoted to to other things. So who, who really knows? Uh, it is cool, but I, I would say that the vast majority of players would not be making that decision. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with you. That's what kind of makes it unique for him. It was sick, uh, though. But yeah, with that, we know what our next map's going to be, folks. Game two uh, between uh, Badinho uh, and Radley going to be on Lobotomy here. With that, both of our players are ready, so let's jump into the action. And spawning top left as the blue Terran, we have Medinho. And bottom right in the red, we have Radley. Okay, so last game I feel like early to mid game went almost as good as you could reasonably hope for, right? For Radley. And unfortunately, sure. he was still able to fumble the game in its totality. Do we think, like, what is, what is realistically, what is Radley's chances? Because I feel like once Medino's game plan got online, he just got outplayed like just Medinio is too good at being everywhere too good at finding places to abuse it's harder it's harder being the 
defending the attacks once they're in place than it is to just keep them going, right? Like, once Medino finds a spot to set his tanks, it's such a huge pain in the ass to get them pushed out. Like, Medino's style seems very difficult to deal with, and I don't know, do you think Radley really has the, the, the raw ability to deal with this in the long run? Or is it time to, like, make some kind of radical decision and be really unpredictable and difficult to deal with? Um... You know, I when we before we got into this, I was assuming Radley would pick a big four player map, and that is not the case here. He picked a bizarre two player map in Lobotomy that is not common on the ladder and not common really, you know, in, in most uh, circles. So um, I think he absolutely has a plan here. I don't know what that plan is. He's got the uh, barracks inside the main, no gas yet, um, but it definitely seems like. Bradley has something in mind here. I just don't know what that is. Yeah, maybe barracks on the other side of the map or something and deal with the... force them to deal with the reverse ramp or who knows, but clearly that is not the case here, so... It's command center first. Oh, that's sick. Okay. This is cool. Uh, yeah. You know what? So we just pray that it's a tank, not a, not a vulture? Uh, I think you just make a bunker. What? If it is, whoa! Oh, this is a misread from what? From Radley here? I'm so confused. He he's assuming that there's a forward barrack somewhere. He didn't fully build it though, so he can cancel it. But he I think thinks... it's because Medinio kept the SCV on the ramp. Yeah. To not let Maybe him up. To prevent like vision or something yeah yeah i think the I assumption think right. was this is way more of a of a aggressive build and Dude, instead it's command center that's crazy i was playing random on starcraft 2 and i uh, -huh. I, uh so when i play random i always go nexus cc or uh two hatch before pool or whatever and Naturally. so when when i play protoss <laughs> i make a pylon in the main and I got called a whole bunch of slurs because apparent because I made a pylon in their main and scared the shit out of them. So it's kind of like the I feel like the mind game here with the SCV worked perfectly in the same way where it's just like a, a higher level player is gonna read this and be like, oh, this could be an aggressive move. And it definitely it was it was like the literal opposite. It was just bait. It was a just bait the, yeah, SCV. Just bait greed. Yeah, because yeah, he didn't come in to like scout. He like he took a position that would be traditionally associated with like some kind of like cheesy move. And then he took a CC. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's definitely strategy, right? Like, just almost like fake and, and, you know, make them think you're strong where you're weak and weak where you're strong. Yeah. Hmm. Well, well, we do have uh, quite a few SCVs. De I mean, you'd have to say an advantage, maybe t at least guaranteed economically to Medinho at the moment. That's so many SCVs. Has a bunker and a wall up well in time. Even sneaks another SCV out on the map just to get some additional scouting. Um, so things looking just great here for Mr. Mad Tato. Watch this not even be for scouting. He's just going to put a CC in the bottom left. <laughs> That'd be <Yeah>. so sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be sick. That seems more like a Radley thing to do. I, I do remember Radley loves to hide bases uh, as well. So, it seems like he could do something like that. Nope, People it's accuse be me of SCV. liking to hide bases too, but I'm just not good enough to take normal bases. Is the real problem. <laughs> you just don't know for the ones to take, so everything's <laughs> a hidden base. <laughs> I take a normal third and then just dies every time because I don't know how to make units. Yeah. Well, once again, Radley really favoring this fact port opener. I know some Terrans just love it to death and it is just their move. Like, Nyokin is... Uh, you know, the poster boy of that, for sure. If you watch him play TVT, it's always backport. Just always. And he's so good at it, and there's no holes. And, you know, you could just make the most out of it every game. Uh, it seems like Radley really seems to favor it. Meanwhile, Medinho maybe going with, uh, I, I'd say, maybe the more meta opener in 3-fact Vulture. Ooh, dead Vulture. See ya. Ooh. Yeah, can't be doing that, Mr. Radley. What? Uh, dropship. Whoa. I don't 
this is such an early drop that I think you need to wait for the vultures to move out. And as I say that, vultures moving out, it might be go time here, folks. Did you drop ship going the into the future? Name. I I'm from the future. Oh, that's messed up. Yeah. Yeah. Deal Deal with back at home. Invested property. Just a full wall. <laughs> That is so many dead SCVs. Very nice wall, but it will... I mean, they can't last forever. Vultures don't do much damage to buildings, but it is enough that uh, truly Radley needs to be concerned. But it looks like Radley holds yeah, fairly well Yeah, the tank out in time and everything. Man, very well done here. What a, what a what a strategy. What a strat. What a gamer, man. Medinio though still up like 14 supply like not not a not in a particularly concerning place here. Yeah, Bradley, we have a lot of minerals built banked up here. I think we're. Are we? Yeah. I mean, what is? He's the at least taking the gas at the natural now. Um, yeah. I think it, it was just a late gas at the natural. We still though don't see uh, Medinho's gas at natural quite yet. So maybe that's an advantage Radley could start to work with is maybe having a little bit of a higher tank count. Um, something along those lines. He's still got that dropship across the map uh, in a fainting a position to do some damage, but you know, obviously uh, Medino in, in position with his Goliaths and Vultures to be able to handle it. Um, continuing to build more and more SCVs as well. So That is so many mines. Just the mines themselves are going to take quite a long time to clear here. Uh, unfortunately for Radley. He's going to need to get that academy and those comsats up here shortly. Four factories inside the main as well. Uh, looks like he's just going to go ahead and finish that eBay off. Ooh, another drop. Yeah, uh, I, I, I almost would have liked to see another dropship be added if he's going to do this, because... Well, oh, he has he, the second one. That back. is the second yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. One dropship at this point in the game isn't going to do much, right? Like, what's yeah, one tank going to do? Too many units. Get scouted. Great mine placement, as always, for Medinho here. Looks like a couple Goliaths getting in position uh, to possibly, you know, try to defend this. And here we go. Three tanks moving in as well. Just going to pick up and take off. The, uh, the second dropship doesn't get spotted coming back, though. And these units coming out on the map to try and chase this dropship down. Oh, what Ooh, a pickoff! Whoa. That was sick. Yeah, that, yeah, that was nice. That was and here comes nice. a second dropship now into the main. Another, uh, another contingency of units though here. Like even a look at even a vulture behind the mineral line just in case, stopping a tank from getting back there and sieging up. Yeah, this is gonna do anything. So very well done again from uh, Medinho. Just uh, kind of surviving this. It looks like Radley trying to get out on the map here. I don't know if this is to secure a third or maybe to hit a timing or both, but uh, he's finally able to move out of his natural here. It's such a bizarre map because you are it's one of the few where your closest third is right in front of your natural and it's facing towards your opponent. And with cliffs and with this being TVT, it's uh you know it's always tricky what map or what base you choose to take because they're all going to have strengths and they're all going to have weaknesses and the problem with this base that uh radley's taking is it can be staged from behind from the low ground so he's he's really going to have to honestly defend not only the top uh, you know, high ground in the center, but also behind that base if he wants to guarantee that he can mine from it. Whereas Medinho taking his third uh, below his main, there is no pocket behind it. There's nowhere that it can really be sieged from uh, to prevent mining, you know, on that low ground there. So uh, Dude, I think a better map cho or better build choice or whatever. Hilariously, though, we have high ground trees here. Right, the trees provide high ground cover, don't they? Yeah, there's like a block chance behind a tree. You, like, how how big is it? I don't remember, but I remember the trees are important in in these situations. So having trees on either side of this choke actually matters. 
Yeah, it does. I forget the percentage. I want to say it's like 75% hit rate, like 25% miss or something like that. Or uh, maybe so 15, but yeah. This Either is way, a map maker. A, yeah, they're missing, by the way. They're missing. <laughs> yeah, look at Those are missing shots. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Gotta love it. That's crazy. The new tree meta, dude? Tanks. Oh, my God. None of the tanks survived. I oh, mean, he still somehow managed to clear it, but that was insane. I mean, just utilizing that miss rate so much. That was sick. And that now the Goliath's thing. using the trees. <laughs> That's crazy. That's so crazy, man. That was cool to see. Well, it looks like third base up for both players, finally. Uh, it looks like Medinho, uh, with the faster transfer, has that third gas mining uh, fully already. Radley just a step behind him. Uh, supplies basically even uh so both players off to a really really good start here uh going into game number two. Ooh, big vulture run by plan will surround these two tanks uh this could be bad here for medinho big mind connect there oh man he's gonna be isolated off from his third base in a second here yep that's the how does he always do this he's just so He's good at it, man. Radley's playing a little more aggressive this game, and I love it. It's it's starting to pay dividends here. Still, though, Medino, 111 supply to 96, does have a supply advantage. But once again, Radley just has positioning Ooh, here. Oh, those mines! They could hit. Ooh, oh, so no. Cool. Nope. So close, though. Still, once this third base is locked, uh, he might be able to just take this next rally and go ahead and kill it. And that's going to force something out of Medina yeah. here. He's going to have to counter, or he's got to hold this. Here comes some vultures to support these tanks up, moving up on the siege tank. He's got it. That's it. That's and then the, all of these STVs are forfeit. Wow. Wow, and I was Radley. complaining about Radley's <laughs> base choice, and it ended up being the thing that uh, worked out the best for him. That's crazy. Shows what right. I know. Medinho coming through with some uh, vultures of his own here, but this isn't going to do the kind of damage he needs to make up for losing his third. No, definitely not. Somehow still hanging on to a supply lead, but I don't know how. This is crazy. Yeah, I do like that uh, That Radley also has that front door that he can open and close in case like something serious, some big serious run by comes through here. We have dropships on top of these siege shanks. Dropping SCVs, we gotta love it. Smart. Forces a full on siege here. Ooh. Right and as here comes the in. flood of Medinho. Wow, look at the mines kind of tripping up those tanks. Oh! Those, those are micros. huge connections. Dude, Riley micros that tank for just the last second so the mine detonations go off on the vulture ball there. That was pretty sick. Losing all these SCVs is pretty devastating, but going to be able to at least save the CC. Not No units coming over here to finish that off. Yeah, nope. That is Medino once again re-securing that third base, and he's put himself in a uh, pretty strong position once again. Uh oh, walking into some tanks or some mines with some tanks is Radley. Uh, but still, uh, Radley not in a bad spot, man. He's got this middle. He's got a fourth base even. Uh, factory count looking very healthy. Uh, he's continuing to produce dropships. Looks like neither player really going wraith heavy. Uh, as they were in the previous game, um, and like we've been seeing today in general. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I say that and Second I jinxed it. Starport now. <laughs> but we do, we do really need to see the production from Radley kick in soon because he is, or he was behind in supply pretty significantly. He's slowly creeping up to uh, meet Medinio now. Uh, but uh, yeah, if he is able to just secure that fourth base and, and not lose anything for a little bit, he should be good. Yeah, I think you're right. He's, it looks like that he's doing so. We're seeing that fourth command center going down on the minimap here. Uh, Radley just kind of beefing up his own front line, uh, placing turrets at his fourth base, pushing this barracks off. We're seeing the the Goliath numbers, uh, you know, start to build. The composition's getting a little more diverse. Ooh, another little vulture skirmish here. Gonna go the way of Medinho. Uh, nice pick up there. And it looks like maybe even Medinho considering pressuring this fourth. Scratch that. He's pressuring it. Here we go. Tanks right. are trying to get into position here from Radley. Uh, but they're getting engaged in on the high ground, or the low ground. 
So why is walking up? Get that front tank. They're gonna make room for tank. Oh, but we finally have the cloaked race coming in here, and there's only two Goliaths left. Yeah, this did not work out for Medinho, I believe. I, he's still up on supply, but I just I don't know. He, yeah, he's I don't know how. Fourth actually. base now, where Bradley took his third. Uh, so yeah, he he may be able to catch up economically if this goes on for long enough, but. Yeah, I, I really don't know how he's constantly up on supply here. Oh, he's and he just has too. another... Yeah, he's taking a fifth as well. And he's just got another force. He's shoving with another force, TBT. This is crazy. Those I don't know how he's... Up. Yeah, they're super stacked, actually. Yeah. Um, still cool, constant engagements here out of the Dinho. He's really just kind of forcing the action. Even if it's failing, he's definitely the one putting uh, you know, the pressure on this game. But we're seeing Radley secure a nice position here behind oh. that mineral line. Oh my gosh, that mine can No, another one! Oh no. Oh wow, you hate to see it. Radley's you race, do. though, actually doing a great job just in general. Like, they, they've been providing a good amount of value here so far. Yeah, I'd like to see him use those for scouting vision over that uh, Terran Center yeah, base. Check everything. Yeah, just gotta try to keep preventing that mining there for that center base while he's got a tank in position for it. Um, oh, that tank fell. All right. Well, um, map position kind of stabilizing once again for both these players. Uh, both players on a comfortable four bases now with fifth uh, on the way here for um, at least uh, Medinho. Uh, <laughs> These SCVs trying to like mine it so hard, they're just getting destroyed by all the units in the mineral line. Yeah, yeah, those tanks are kind of messing everything up. He might have just like shift repair commanded all his SCVs there. Yeah. But either way, he's got to get mining with those. Um, Bradley, though, starting to pull ahead in supply, uh, picking off yet another tank with his uh, small squadron of uh, oh, rates. Man. Yet another oh, coming in. You see it. Covert Ops. It's Radley oh, time. Once again. Radley Dadley with the ghosts, man. Oh, dude, he has control over the low ground outside. I wonder if he can nuke and hit the hit the whole SCV dude, line. Dude, he can. He can, That's actually. He's so sick. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it's the one matchup where nukes are definitely viable. So I, I would not be surprised to see that. Still, quite, look at all the blue top right, man. Medinho's uh, fully into top right uh, as far as being able to secure that. We're seeing three starports even uh, dropping at Medinho's natural. I wonder if he's uh, sniffed out the, the the covert ops and knows it could potentially be nuke or something like that so far. Maybe lockdown? I don't know. I'm just a little afraid of that fleet of dropships that looks like they might be on the way here. Yeah, it does, does look like quite a bit of dropships here. Let's we'll see how that plays out. Wow. Radley just getting aggressive here. Oh my Plenty God. of tanks so moving in tanks. on the center base. And that's guaranteed. He's he's going to push this the base down. The dropships coming in, but there's race Ooh. involved. No way, man. And dropships just get caught the worst time uh, oh by God. these wraiths. It was like very well done. Load. Yeah, that was very well done from Radley not to show the rates with the initial uh, attack. Bro, and for it, me, that's a Ethernet ripped out of the wall, man. Oh my <laughs> god, he's so broken. Yeah, you would have you would have dropped right there. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm getting banned for Battlehead for sure. <laughs> uh, interesting, uh, you know, Striker pointing out the uh, one big oh. disadvantage is definitely the upgrades. Oh man, I can't believe it. Turret's coming down just in time. Uh, siege tanks as well to join top right and but I mean still there's got to be a big target on top right here for Radley uh, He's he's the base is very isolated. There's only a couple tanks there so far looks like uh, Medino at least continuing to shuttle more and more siege tanks over there um, and Radley's just been putting on so much pressure that he's able to control his own side of the map bottom left hasn't uh, seen any pressure even so he's really in a great spot here. Nuclear oh! silo. It's nuke time, man. 
It's Radley time. This is, uh, I'm telling you, he's just known for it. He does it all the time. So we'll see how scary this gets for our boy Medinho. Dude, the supply is such a huge difference right now. Radley really making this game look completely different from the last one. I'm yeah, he it. is. I mean, if you remember the last game, even, he had a great start, too. It's not like he was in a bad spot. He, uh, it was just Medinho just being persistent. But uh, this game, persistence doesn't seem to be enough. Yeah, because so Radley's far. too busy shoving his fist everywhere he can find it, dude. He's just hitting Medinho everywhere. He's been super aggressive all game. Yeah, he really has been. It's been paying off for him. Uh, ooh, the scan goes down. Covered Ops has been seen. He knows what's going on here. Medinho, I believe, still has the upgrade advantage. So anytime this mech-on-mech -mech engagements are happening, it is kind of been favoring Medinho. But still, it's not been stopping uh, our boy Radley here. And yeah, big siege coming in. Big Whoa. flock of raids. No, and uh, actually, we do have a Goliath there. Oh, yeah, the, go. The one Goliath. Yeah, the one Goliath. He can do it. Uh, no scan going down, so actually, man, Radley <laughs> losing a lot of units here. <laughs> I'm just thinking that this is like my League of Legends team and the Goliath is like our jungler. Everyone's just yelling at him. What did you kill all night yeah. of those raids, bro? <laughs> man, that's every experience I have as jungler. Oh, <laughs> I thought the race were going to hit each other here. Oh, Looks man. Like they're going after each other. Wow, diving on the turret as well. This is interesting. Man. This is getting nuts, man. It's just Wraith on Wraith at this point. Ooh. It looks like barely Medinho going to come out on top. I, if Medinho turns this around, I'm going to be so upset. I'm not going to get why. I don't know how he does this. If we don't see a nuke, I'm going to be upset. That's what. That's the only thing that's going to make me upset yeah. at this point. And we do have a couple ghosts out and nuke being researched. The question is where? What do you nuke? What do you nuke right now if you're uh, Radley? Oh man, huge engagement. Scans going down. Goliaths and tanks marching to the high ground here to try to starve Medinho out. And we're finally seeing the supplies uh, truly start to favor Radley here once again. Man, so I mean, Medinho really needs to secure that center base, but Radley is just being super aggressive right now, not letting him. And now that he has the nuke in his pocket, if that base ever goes down, he can, I mean, he could potentially just nuke that uh, from the low ground. Oh, Ooh, we even have Big engagement now. from uh, Medinho here, moving a sizable force towards bottom left. He can essentially stop two or three bases in this positioning here. Yeah. There's almost no tanks there, so you can continue to push down and get bottom left potentially. All oh, right, we got, we got the ghost. ghost. Yeah, gotta get that locked down. Oh, oh he's he's here nuking. Comes. No way. Is it gonna work? It's gonna work. He's gonna nuke. Oh my god, tanks. it's happening! And it's 200, 200 for like three tanks. It's already efficient in gas. Boom! Boom! <laughs> Sick. Wow, nuke one, done. I All actually right, we'll like that use of nukes as like the, as like a push deterrent. Yeah, it's it's great, man. I mean, it's no joke. It's literally legit in this matchup. Here we go, more uh, ghosts walking in here. If he had the lockdown, it would be two immediate kills and he could have locked the vessel down and removed that as well. So, I mean, if you're gonna commit with ghosts, go all the way, get, get locked down. <laughs> Watching this one Goliath just survive for literally forever with the D-Matrix is kind of hilarious. Yeah, yeah D-Matrix, pretty strong ability here. Ooh, Wraith's coming in, though, from Medinho, starting to try to clear out uh, this tank line, preventing this fifth base in the center. Goliath's fall, and now tanks starting to drop as well. Meanwhile, we got the, the reinforcements are coming. Where's the lockdown? Where's uh, the here lockdown? Here are the, the anti-air ghosts. Ah oh, man. Where's the Valk? There it is. I was gonna I say, we sure need the Valk in down. here. Yeah, the Valk's great. Does catch one more Wraith kill with the tail end Valk strike there. Um, and it looks like Ooh, Radley... Siege coming to top right. 
Looks like we're making our way. He should just duke it, man. You got it. Why not? Oh my gosh. Once again, bottom left base undefended. Another push coming down that way, though. Yeah, I mean, it's TVT. You got to leave a couple tanks there, at least. And we see nothing bottom left. Once again, he's just leaving it vulnerable. Okay, one tank. He does have uh, a dose there, though, so it is impenetrable. <laughs> he just nukes anything that's trying to come in. All right, here we go. Tanks are being sieged. Uh, yeah, this is also the backside of another base here for Radley. So if he loses the mining capability here, it could be uh, pretty rough for him. It looks like he barely holds it. Yeah, he what could... an interesting uh, location for a base for this matchup specifically, though. Having that having that cliff facing like uh, the low ground over there is such a dangerous location. And once again, the race just getting more work done here. These Valks keep sticking with the army, and Medina is not hitting the the main army with the the race. They're just coming in and, and doing poke damage whenever there's nothing to fight them. And it's it's a great move. Let's say they're finally gonna get cleaned up here, though. But then you have now you have three Valks and doing essentially nothing. There we go, wow. and Medinio finally GG's after quite a spectacular game. Very, it was almost looking like he was going to come back again, which was a little crazy. Because yeah, Radley he... just played out of his mind all game. For sure, he was fighting for it that game too. Uh, I mean, it, it was a close one. Uh, I would say even Medinho with some of the early Vulture pressure was, you know, uh, in a really good spot, had the good mind contained once again, but that time, man, Radley, uh, you know, pulled it out. Uh, he did some great work, uh, you know, kind of locking off the center of the, the, the map. Uh, the Wraith fights were so back and forth between both players that game, actually. And, um, yeah, you know, gets off the nuke for show. So that was cool. That was very well done from him. And uh, yeah, showing he's no slouch in the TVT matchup for sure. Uh, but with that, going to be Medinho's map pick here. So we'll have to see uh, where he chooses to take this. Yeah, I feel I feel kind of bad for whoever wins, though, because they're going to have to go against Gypsy, who's had enough time for a full night's sleep. He's got a meal yeah. in, got a workout. <laughs> a manicure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, it, there's no, no joke. It is a slog, man. TVT is so much work. It's so meticulous, like... It is the matchup that you can't just just mindless brain shove. You know, you you gotta set up your tank lines. You gotta scout. You gotta uh, take bases. You gotta defend bases. It's uh, I mean, nothing about it's easy. So, for sure, Gypsy gotta be resting up. Gotta be watching and and I'm sure trying to get tips and tricks leading into the losers finals, which will be, uh, you know, the the winner of this uh, match. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. A lot on the line here. Um, yeah, with that, uh, I'm kind of interested to see where Medinho going to take this. And it's going to be Citadel. Great map choice. One of the new maps, but already a new staple favorite and great for this matchup. Um, Yo, this map looks cool. This is a sick map. design. It's a cool one. It's a tough one, though. There's a lot of neutral... Uh, high ground area to uh, kind of drop through into the mains. So dro drops are a very big possibility on this map. Um, also plenty of ramps leading towards the center and side bases. Uh, low ground, 12-6, uh, 9-3 uh, bases. So yeah, it can be a little tough to defend as well. Um, but yeah, with that folks, uh, our players are ready to go. So let's get into the final game of this series. It's going to be game three, Medinho uh, facing off against Radley on Citadel. And spawning top left as the red Terran, we have Medinho. And in the bottom right as the blue Terran, we have Radley. I think they're doing this on purpose. Just switching colors every match. Just to just to mess with Those us. Sons of bitches. <laughs> yeah, that's that's striker man. <laughs> no, he's yeah, good old striker man. Uh, <laughs> he's the one. Ob's in this one. Oh, oh, never mind. It's zero. 
Okay, okay. <laughs> it's Medino. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, uh, once again, we got ourselves another cross map TVT. So likely going to be going, uh, you know, a uh, pretty sizable distance this game. Kind of excited to see how this one's going to end up playing out. Um, based on. What was that? What I was going to say Medino taking a sip of his rum and coke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just pure, just pure rub. <laughs> Oh, yeah, his uh, his Bacardi contract is, is all hinged on this game here. He's got he's got to win, or you know Bacardi's gonna have to issue a statement. <laughs> um, well, based on what we saw previously, uh, I'm assuming out of Medino here, likely gonna be going with that comfortable one fact. CC into three fact bolt pressure. Uh, it's kind of been as tried and true, and it's been going well for him. Meanwhile, Radley likely uh, going to go back to that fact port, uh, which is you know kind of been the way he's opened both games so far. Uh, so we'll have to see how much uh, you know that ends up playing itself out. Yeah, I like that Radley was able to find a pair of Chad pants and just put them on and just push all game long, be super aggressive and and kind of not let Medinio play the way that he wanted to. Uh, you know, he was the first one out of the gate with the uh, the big cloud of Wraiths doing all the damage. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, just was super aggressive last game. And I think that's a great way of combating uh, a player who plays a, a very particular style. Because um, Medinio was really not allowed to do his game plan uh, last game. He was just busy defending all his bases. And if, he, if Radley's able to execute again the way he did last game, it's going to be... Yeah, we're going to be in for another really long, good game. Yeah, you're definitely right about that. Like, the, the moment that comes to my mind was Radley's first push on uh, Medino's third base, where he kind of locked that off and then killed it outright. Uh, it was, I mean, that was just a big, big moment for him. I mean, mainly just not only securing map control, he took a third behind it at the same time uh, and kind of crushed Medino's uh, economy early on there. Um, so we definitely seeing a very fast command center out of Radley here. Yeah, uh, and we do have two facts now on the field here, uh, one with proxy outside of the uh, natural expansion. This is this is very scary. It's scary, but this is a read. This is definitely a read from Medinho because yeah. he knows this is going to be fact port. And to be fair. Radley's doing this about as greedy as possible, right? There's no bunker yeah. at the natural. He's getting an add-on before second vulture. This is a read out of Medinho, and I'll tell you this: I think he's read it correctly. I, I, I'm pretty sure we're about to see a, a, a volt timing that the Radley's build is just incapable of handling without a bunker. So yeah. here we go. I mean, you're going to have two units right here. Oh, he... no way. He read this, and he's backed off to his ramp. Still, SCD in position to repair. Uh, at the same time, though, it is three vultures versus uh, a tank and a vulture. He continues to wall it. Oh, my God. Don't back up what? the tank. I can't believe this. I can't believe he just held that. Suddenly... I mean, there's no other way to say it. Medino's on the, the back foot here. I, I'm i surprised he's even building the command center. He's just got to hold. Um, no way. The Goliath walks down. Uh, Gol that's, I wasn't expecting to see a Goliath. That's crazy. Why would he move oh, out with the tank there? He's got to repair it. He's got to just full repair it. He's got to get a, a Wraith out too. Oh yeah. my god. Oh man, this is so close. Doc Holiday, this is insane. He might have, Madinho might have still done it. I thought for sure he had secured himself. Uh, Radley had secured his main, but where are the oh, SCDs? It's all going to be up to this the tank. SCDs need to come help. Yeah, he's got to definitely pull some SCDs. Here, the high here. ground. Yeah, the Ooh. high ground's huge. What is going gotta, on? He's got to repair this tank. It's over. No. Oh, man. It's a Wraith and SCVs versus three Goliaths. I was wondering what the Goliath read was, and now it was ended up being That'll such a good call here. Wraith falls, 
three Goliaths remaining. Four, fourth one rallied in here. And I think Medinho has done it. He should land that barracks and start making Marines at this point. He needs just pressure, pressure, pressure. Yeah. Command center building for Medinho as well. <laughs> uh, what about Ooh, that? No bro, rush. <laughs> Man, you know, <laughs> he broke the rule, dude. He did break the rule, man. <laughs> oh, man. Mad Tato taking a close series, dude. I can't believe that. What a crazy game. It was so wire thin there, man. Like, if that first tank continued to sustain and had the repair, I think suddenly the game has flipped on its head and Medinho is in a horrible position. But he managed to pull it out, man. That was crazy. Yeah, I, I thought the game was kind of over after that first push didn't get into the main. Um, but uh, yeah, actually insane. Uh, Medinho once again does it uh, with some pretty unorthodox uh, high pressure stuff. That was pretty awesome. Uh, very good last game. Love to see the sportsmanship at the end. No one's salty. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It was awesome. It was a great little series. Very happy. And also, you know what? Uh, that's another TVT that we don't have to sit through for an hour. So, you know, uh, pretty, ha pretty happy with the result all all in all. Um, but, uh, yeah. I don't know. you think he could have held if that if the SCVs were repairing that tank instantly? Like the I, think if, I think so. I think if he had three SCVs just on the high ground with the tank, uh, you know, repairing, I think he kills off all those vultures without mines. Um, yeah. So it was wire thin, man. It was really close there uh, from Radley. Still, uh, great showing from Radley. Always, uh, you know, a uh, formidable player. Always a fun player to watch. You know, if it wasn't for him, we definitely wouldn't have got to see a, a nuke and some lockdown today uh, in TVT. So, you know, he's always bringing a show, man. Um, but with that, folks, it's going to be down to our final match of this evening. Uh, it's going to be Big Jip facing off against Medinho in a best of three. Uh, on Citadel in order to secure, uh, you know, that re position into the round of 16. All righty, right, guys. Folks. We're going to head to a quick break real quick, and we'll be back with that series in just a little bit.
Hello and welcome back all you friends to BSL 18 Group E. We are at our final match of the day here. It's going to be Losers Finals. Big American Gypsy facing off against Medinho, man. And this is going to be an exciting one for the ages. Yeah, man. Looking forward to seeing how Gypsy's going to play this one, especially coming off for a break and being nice and fresh. Uh, it's got to be real difficult to just play these grindy TVTs over and over and over. Medinho now going to go into his third series of TVT. It's going to be pretty tough, especially going up against the machine like uh, like uh, Gypsy is. Uh, yeah, man, it's going to be it's got to be pretty tough on him. But uh, he still looks like he's got his drink ready and everything, you know. So hopefully the mental's still in it. But man, it is, it is such a slog to play this much StarCraft all at once. Oh, for sure, with TVT. And I mean, not to mention, Gypsy's got the mental edge uh, from the series earlier, right? A 2-0 victory uh, in the previous series. Gypsy's got to be, you know, feeling pretty strong uh, going into this one. So medinho has got uh, quite a few uphill battles uh, ahead of him here. Yeah, certainly. Uh, you are right, too. The, just the, the knowledge that you got 2 0 in the first series can really weigh on a player. Uh, it really, you know, I don't know, because some, some players are really affected by that kind of thing, right? Like, like they lose uh, a series and that like sticks with them the whole time. But it really just depends on the player. Medinio has se seemed to like generally keep it really together uh, in that last series, uh, coming off of a loss at, uh, at versus Gypsy. So hopefully he is in a good spot mentally and is able to go and miss the play his best. Yeah, I sure hope so. And I mean, he is a competitor. I. I... I expect he's going to be giving us a, a, you know, quite a good show here, um, you know, and we'll have to uh, in order to take down, you know, such a dominant player like Gypsy. Uh, but with that, both of our players are ready to go, folks. So uh, let's jump into it here. Game number one, Gypsy facing off Medinho on Citadel. And spawning top left as the blue Terran, uh, we have Gypsy. And in the bottom left hand as the red Terran, we have Medino. Sipping on that Bacardi. Bro, look at that thing. He just refilled that shit. He, of course, man. He's got to power <laughs> up. He's got to power up, man. How else is he going to get the energy to I fight don't... Big Jib? I don't understand. There's people out there who get energy from alcohol. Like, if I was with Unio, I'd just be like falling asleep. I'd be like, all right, I got one just, more game. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'd Do we have time that. for a break? I need a nap. Uh, Just like, I need some bread or something. I need to eat. <laughs> he's special, man. They call him the experiment, you know? Because it's just, he's so bizarre. Like, he's like Bender, dude. He, it's direct chemical fuel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like <laughs> he's d he's designed to drink Bacardi. Oh man, that's so good. He's got the ID and he's got the potato shirt to pull it off, man. <laughs> well, I see um, the One Piece shirt though, man. He's repping, dude. Yeah, yeah, he sure is. Man, someone talked my ear off about One Piece like the other week. I. Telling me how I'm missing out by I haven't seen it, obviously, but I I need to. He's telling me it's basically the greatest like fiction like writing in okay, of our I time. Would, I would. <laughs> okay, Weebs, calm down. Like, come on. <laughs> I mean I wasn't joking, that's exactly what he said. So <laughs> That's CC so funny. first at a big jip here. Wow, that's a big amazing. balls play. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. He's got the mental edge already, right? Like you could take some risks and uh yeah i i think this is gonna pay off for him here barracks going down at the natural here he's gonna use it to kind of wall off uh meanwhile uh mad tato moving across the map with his first scv will cross scout and recognize that he doesn't know where his opponent is but they have to be a closer position than that so we'll give him some info uh, factory already down uh, on time here for Medinho. And Gypsy, no scout. Really trying to kind of prevent or hide that command center first as long as possible. Unfortunately for him, SCV will be making its way uh, top left here from Medinho, and that's going to go 
uh, scouted here momentarily. Yeah, a little, little unfortunate that Medino is not able to see this immediately, but I don't really think he was in a particularly strong position to do some kind of reactionary play there. We do have the bunker now coming down, so Gypsy going to secure his natural expansion nice and quickly and be very happy that he didn't get punished at all for going CC first. Yeah, you gotta be happy with this. I mean, even though that is a very quick vulture out here from Mad Tato, uh, it's not gonna be able to do any damage with that bunker. Uh, actually, was there a vulture? Hmm. Uh, looks like not. Yeah, We're I guess he on. scouted the timing, scouted the bunker, and he must have just realized, all right, there's nothing I could do here. Might as well just go ahead and get my uh, add-on. So not a bad reaction there from Mr. Mad Tato. So still, who is your who? <laughs> no, continue, continue. Sorry, I didn't. Uh... I was gonna say, still, if you had to pick between one of these two positions, you gotta be happy if you're Gypsy. Getting oh, away yeah. with that extra eco early, it's just gonna start snowballing here for him. So um, I think uh, Mad Tato probably uh, feeling like he's got to get some work done here. So who was telling you that One Piece is the greatest work of fiction if, of our generation? Uh, it was a guy at a Dragon Ball event. That okay, I, I worked at. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, it was a cool guy. I was working with him, but I mean, I've just never seen someone who was like so, like I he couldn't be like couldn't believe that like One Piece existed, and like he was just like blessed to have like watched. He's it. like, I, I can't I, believe I, I was born. If I was born in a different century, I would have never known One Piece. My life would be incomplete. I'm not joking, man. Like, I've never seen someone so passionate about talking about something. I was like, whoa. Like, okay, maybe I really am missing out. <laughs> like, who, like, basically. All righty. The tank has arrived, and it's outranging this bunker. So we're watching, essentially, a TVP right now, as the bunker is going to have to be repaired. Yeah, not a, you know, Medino just getting what he can done here. Uh, it'd be funny if he went for something like Siege first and... I'm sure he will, actually. And this is likely going to end up being Siege first, and he's going to try to hang on to the position he has. Which means Jip's got to get some tanks out or something here soon, because he's going to have to uh, break out eventually. Um, or, okay, and the answer is four factories, I guess. Uh, That's a lot so, of yeah, factories. That, <laughs> that looks pretty scary. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Still no gas, though, from Gypsy at the natural here. It's actually TVP. What is happening? This is funny. Oh no, this is scary. Here we go, all right. Well, siege mode complete. Here comes the vultures. Famously, marine vulture not great against two siege tanks though. I think we're gonna no? need to get some pretty miracle miraculous mines. Miracle, mir miraculous. Miracle? <laughs> miracle. Here we go. SCD's pulled off the line and oh, with no. these five vultures, I mean, he's oh got it. Another okay. siege tank pulls up to the party. Yeah. Oh man, maybe not. Maybe. Dude, and they're not this. even. They're just yellow. They're at half HP still. Yeah, neither one really close to death yet. SCVs wow. are going. This is just phenomenal control from Medinho here. Really pulling yeah. back, using that positioning to his advantage, diving up that high ground. And he continues to trade well versus these vultures. No yeah. mines yet from Gypsy either. So it's not like he's waiting for some big connect. Oh GG my god. Is and wow. Uh, Mad Tato off to a good start in the rematch of this series here. Uh, going up 1 0 uh, against Gypsy. A little surprising given uh, the series that we saw earlier, I'd say. But uh, very well done there from Medinho. Yeah, what a sick play. Even recognizing that his first attack well went well enough that he starts bringing SCVs to repair his tanks uh, and uh, just keep that pressure going. Uh, he never let his S or his tanks get fully surrounded by the SCVs, uh, so they were never able to be stopped and killed because SCVs, they, they start and stop over and over and over again if you're kiting them back, so they really don't add very much DPS. They're just sitting as like a wall in front of the vultures trying to absorb some of that damage. So the control from Mandinio was so good, man, to just kite back, not take any damage, and keep those tanks alive for long enough. 
I honestly thought Gypsy was in such a spectacular position, but Madinia executed super good, and he had a really, really good build order where he canceled that, or maybe he even started the Vulture and got his Siege right away and put on a ton of pressure at the front of the base. Very good play. Yeah, very solid play. And like you said, from a position where I thought Gypsy did have the lead, uh, obviously with that uh, faster command center, you know, four factories pumping out. Uh, but once again, Medinho just showing why positioning in tech is just so key in this matchup. Uh, I, you know, I think a lot of this stemmed back to the read of not making that first vulture, you know, getting that add on and researching siege mode ASAP because he knew it was going to come down to. Uh, you know, basically him forcing himself to use his own tech advantage uh, to create a scenario like that. So very well done there from Medinho. And Gypsy now suddenly, uh, you know, he's in danger, right? It, I mean, this is his BSL lifeline on the line here, has to win. Um, so he will end up picking Retro, another big four player map, uh, definitely a favorite map uh, you know, for a lot of Terran players. Um, so yeah, this is going to be an interesting one, folks. Uh, with that, both our players are ready. Let's jump into game number two of Losers Finals, uh, Gypsy versus Medinho on Retro. And spawning, bottom left as the red Terran currently up 1-0 in this series, it is Medinho. And in the bottom right hand corner, we have the blue Terran Gypsy. All right, man, well, game number one, bit of an upset. I would say so. I would say it's an upset, um, you know, just given the previous series. Uh, yeah. I don't expect to see another CC first out of Gypsy. I'll say that much. I would like to see it, though. Yeah, you think now's Just the call? some confidence. Yeah. Go again. We go re. That we was accident. <laughs> yeah. My keyboard disconnect. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Well, Mad Tato been playing, I mean, differently you know, uh, he's definitely one to change up builds in a series. Um, you know, obviously, we ha that was the first time we've seen him do a siege timing last game. It was the optimal time to do so. Previously, we saw even the proxy factory versus Radley game three. So uh, he is capable of throwing some throwing some stuff out there. Uh, that's, you know, especially now that he's up 1-0 in the series, he's got an advantage, right? Like, the pressure is off. He can do whatever he wants. Yeah, especially for a player who likes to play um, unorthodox, having the extra wiggle room to do something weird and, you know, take a risk is usually pretty pretty neat. Uh, let's see. I'm kind of curious what he's going to do here, if he's going to go back to his own style or do another kind of pressure build. Yeah. I'm a little curious myself. Um, I think this time he's less likely to pressure just given the opener, right? Like uh, Gypsy is not going for some type of a risky opener. This isn't, you know, command center first. It's just more of a standard barracks in the main. So it's TVT. It's hard to pressure up a ramp versus Marines and SUVs and vice versa. So I think this is, this is not the game to pull out a two fact or something like that. Um, I'm kind of curious to see how this one, you know, it will end up playing out. My my guess is it's going to be fact, uh, one fact uh, CC versus one fact CC into three facts for both players, but we'll see. Factory going down inside the main of Mad Tato here. Marine under uh, production as well. Does scout just a single SCV on gas here for Mad Tato. Um, so, yeah, nothing out of the ordinary. This isn't going to be two port wraith or anything bizarre. And gets that SCV out of dodge. So, nothing, nothing unusual out of both players. Just the single fact that we expected to see a couple Marines being made. And barracks are starting to float across the map. 
SCV for uh, Medino already in position to take that natural command center. Gypsy likely to be doing the same thing here in a second. Yep, command center Alrighty. down for both players. Yeah, and we got build parity going on for the most part here. I've been informed. Adam, I have been pronouncing our red Terrence player incorrectly the whole time, so my bad, guys. Uh, I'll make sure to get Madorbno's uh, name correct on purpose, you know, from now on. <laughs> oh, man. Looks like nice scouting here from Gypsy, being able to, you know, see. I can't SCP believe I got count. all the way back in, yeah. Yeah, there was an he didn't SCP. SCP. He didn't know about it. All right, there we go. Another fact down from Menwarbno. <laughs> yeah. Well, we got a first factory done here from Gypsy. Looks like maybe a second one here in a second going to be started. Um, command center at the natural just about to complete. So nothing out of the usual here. Uh, Vulture out on the map here for Medinho. Uh, but it looks like he's going to end up falling back. Huh, this is interesting. Gypsy taking his siege tank to 6 o'clock. I'm not sure why. Hmm. It just feels like the... To try and catch something coming across the map here or something. You'd have to guarantee that it moved to 6 o'clock first. Whereas, like, his natural just looks vulnerable. Yeah, it's interesting too because it's not like the barracks isn't floating around, you know, getting information on what's what's where. Right. I feel like these like, vultures could just come around the north and get into Gypsy's. Oh, but he finds them. Hello, yeah, what's up? Yeah, Surprise! we say that, and they just go straight there. That's so funny. Uh, well, there's no we mines either. Here, yeah. No mines. Oh, this could be bad, man. If he gets in position, it's almost like the reversal last game. Yeah, Medini Bobini in a tough spot right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only four vultures versus two tanks and a vulture. SCVs will start to fall here. Oh, even mine's going down. I can't believe it. That's very fast mine timing here. He's got to start targeting some SCVs. Like, he's not really doing any real damage pecking away at that command center. There we go. SCVs starting to fall. Uh, it looks like Medinho really trying to wait till the last second when his final Marine or Vulture will come out. And here we go. SCV's pulled off the line, starting to focus down single siege tanks, actually refocusing onto uh, those Mine. Vultures. It'll at least, yeah, buy that time and give him positioning to put down his own mines. And that should uh, kind of stop this tank pressure for now. Even a counter, it looks like, going out here. At least threatening it, yeah. Uh, a little confused though, because the vulture is not actually going to trigger those mines. So uh, now we just have vultures in the natural expansion. Interesting choice here from Medini Bobini. Uh, this is a lot of SCVs getting killed here by these <laughs> these vultures. Uh, still, those vultures like kind of messed up a little bit too. It wasn't the best trade. Look at this though. We do have the evacuation at the natural as well here. Uh, Pulling your SCVs off the line, of course, is going to be better than losing them, but still, shutting down the natural expansion now. What a weird situation to be in here. Medinio really does have a huge uh, factory count, though, so he is going to clean up uh, the natural expansion here. Maybe maybe he comes over now with all of his vultures and shuts this down? No, it looks like he's going to abandon once again and come back and deal with this tank. Probably the right call here. This is the free yeah. trade. Um, but still, I mean, making the best of a bad situation is Medinho. Uh, now he's got mines, and now he definitely has, uh, you know, the map control has way more vultures than Gypsy. Gypsy on the back foot a little bit, but it looks like Gypsy will have a fourth and a fifth factory on board. Man, all he's got to do is just start producing vultures. Uh, it will be scouted, though, from Medinho's barracks, so Gypsy's really got to, you know, be careful about when and where he moves out. Well, Gypsy's pretty comfortably uh, ahead right now, as you were saying. Uh, but Medinho has shown through these last couple series that he's been playing that he, he does know how to play from behind. He does. He is a bit of a risk taker. He likes to uh, kind of make these like big flashy plays that potentially turn the game around for him. 
looks like his little contingent of uh, aggressive oh. vultures on the other side of the map going to get actually blocked off by some sick micro from Gypsy, and that is going to be completely annihilated once again, landing the, the barracks hilariously. Uh, but uh, yeah, so we have yet another clash coming across the map here. It looks like a bunch of vultures now from Medi uh, sorry from Gypsy coming across the map to the natural of Medina. We do have one tank and the vultures coming back here to block, but that is a lot of vultures. Did they get in on and clean this tank up too quickly? Okay, second tank now coming from the main. Yeah, that second tank was just oh, in time. Gypsy super was almost clutch. a shark there, able to kill it. But actually, another rally of four vultures coming in here, and Gypsy might feel like he's got enough. Mine's yeah. going down, and yeah, this is a lot of vultures here from Big Gyp. Oh, Big what a mine! detonation, and that's the game. That has to be the game. That's just insane. Uh, mind connect there. SCB is continuing to fall. Remember, this is on top of uh, the previous eco damage that had already been done earlier this game. So, Gypsy uh, just securing uh, 40 supply lead at this point. And, wow. and those mines are going to seal the deal for that tank. Yep. Wow. And just a couple of bonus SCBs to throw on top there. Just to say yeah. thank you for his loyalty. Just a bonus. And Gypsy's. I mean, he's not going to let off the gas pedal at this point. He's going to continue to rally. Yeah. And yeah, there's just there's nothing Medino can really do from this position. Man. What a sick game. Really, really solid. Yeah, man. Gypsy just showing why he's, I mean, just so good. He, you can never count him out, even if he's down in a series. Look uh, at this SCV repair party, though. Yeah, I mean, he might be able to hold this ramp for a little bit, but this is... Yeah, yeah. where well, you're down 43 supply, though, at the beginning of the game, and just the Vulture Flood is going to keep coming. There we go. More and more SCVs continue to fall. Gypsy continuing to throw Vultures ah. at it. Oh, there is a Wraith in the main. That's annoying. Oh, another one. Here comes another one. <laughs> pew! Pew! Yeah, <laughs> like, <you know> what? <laughs> there is so... <laughs> How many so shots silly. does it take to get a kill a? It's like eight to kill a SCV. If they if they're not repairing each other, sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, it's not like it's a machine gun either. It's like every couple of seconds, it's like pew. Yeah. Oh man. Oh my god. That's a dead tank. Gypsy sees it happening, immediately rushes in to finish it off. GG. Well played. Thrown out there from Mad Tato. And Gypsy's going to end up tying up this loser uh, bracket final series, man. One to one. So that's it, man. This next one's for all the marbles. Uh, it's also going to be Medina's map pick. So he does have advantage there. Um, but yeah, man, Gypsy, uh, you know, still in it. Still looking strong. Uh, but yeah, this really, it's this game three is down to, you know, could be either, could go either way. I, I don't know. I don't know how to call this one, man. <laughs> I'm digging the face cams. I've been watching. There's no signs of tilting from either player. So I think we're just going to have to go in and uh, there's an even even game on the table still. There's no, you know, no. it doesn't look like there's any kind of mental advantage for either player. Everyone seems to be chilling. So, yeah, looking forward to it. But, uh, man, Gypsy looked to be playing really clean that one. Yeah, yeah, he really did, man. He, he looked amazing gotta say uh it is uh he's just such a strong player man he's such a strong competitor he always puts forth his best effort man and he's he's doing a great job of it here so well gotta say if you guys are enjoying uh you know watching bsl here folks uh please consider contributing uh to next season's bsl bsl 19 uh you know later this year uh we're currently trying to raise some funds here uh, to make this happen um, so yeah uh, if you, if you uh, have the funds available please consider uh, donating on the Patreon and for those of you who do donate um, all donators are put on the BSL uh, merch uh, hoodie so if you consider donating now you might make it on the hoodie or you will make it on the hoodie I should say so please consider doing so uh, but yeah uh, TVT here, uh, Medinho and Gypsy. Once again, it's all tied up, all down to this. 
and we will have to see uh, what map is chosen here. And it looks like it's going to be Radeon. So Radeon, great map. Uh, big four-player map, lots of bizarre high ground bases, lots of neutral air to drop through. Um, so yeah, this is going to be an interesting one, folks. Uh, with that, both our players are ready to go. So let's go ahead and jump into the action here. Game three, Gypsy versus Medinho on Radeon. And spawning top right of Radeon as the blue Terran. It's Big Gypsy. And in the top left, as the Red Terran, we have Mado. Mado. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Radeon uh -huh. being uh, just a bizarre map where close natural positions like this are possible. Usually, you know, maps are kind of symmetrical the other way, but um, with both their naturals kind of facing towards each other, that, you know, in-between base at 12 o'clock is sometimes... Uh, highly disputed, um, makes for some interesting play. Plenty of neutral high ground between their naturals to either drop or use wraith play as well. Um, travel time, natural to natural here is, uh, I, I don't know, I, I haven't spent a ton of time, uh, you know, checking it out, but it seems reasonably short. So early pressure, definitely viable given these positions. Um, yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be a different one. Yeah, speaking of the map though, what's going on with the the AMD like psyop invasion? What's happening? Wait, what? We need I'm a... not following you. Dude, this is a, the the AMD symbol is in the center. Radeon is like a the the brand name for their graphics card series. Oh. Yeah. No, you're not wrong. Yeah, it's huh. super weird. Why can't? How about you guys just sponsor BSL? How about that? Yeah, come on, Radio. What the hell, come dude? On. Just sponsor us. Just give come money. On. Give give zero money. Just do it. Give it. Give. This is this is real desperate right now. This Open is like up your with your ex hearts. talking to your friends. <laughs> Open up your corporate hearts. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Like, how's so? How's Bryce doing? I haven't heard from him in a while. It's like, dude, just talk to me directly, okay? <laughs> you know, we don't need to be passive aggressive about it, AMD. Yeah, come on, AMD. Well, uh, nothing unusual here. Oh, wow, they're both gonna scout each other first, right off the bat. So, oh, they kissed. Hidden. Yeah, yeah. But no one doing any weird stuff today. Nope. Factory down here for Mad Tato. No Marine being built yet. There we go. So yeah, nothing unusual. I'd expect more of the same. Probably both players going to open some type of uh, uh, one fact, uh, you know, into command center. And then we'll see from there. I wonder if someone might change it up and go fact port or something like that. Looks like uh, Mad Tato's SCV sharking for a kill. Wasn't quite able to find it. Oh, it's right there. Oh, he's going to get it. No, nope. oh, he didn't get it. Oh, close though. No nuclear explosion, unfortunately. Yeah. Command center going to go down at the natural here for Gypsy. Uh, same thing for uh, Medinho. All right, whoever gets a den first wins. Oh, that's Gypsy winning. That's it. Good game. All right, we're calling it. <laughs> All right, well, two Marines moving out on the map here for Medinho. He's got a. He changed it up and went. Uh, both players actually uh, went Vulture first this game, so kind of just flex in there or maybe it's just because of the travel time from natural and natural has him a little more timid uh against early pressure either way i think gypsy should have defend defender's advantage here yeah he will second yeah. ultra out 
Looks like fact add-on uh, being produced out of uh, for Medinho. Meanwhile, it's going to be third vulture for uh, Gypsy. All right, he's he's pushing. Gypsy meticulous Gyps with his win. unit position. He... Look at that concave. Look at Marines don't even get in range in time, and everything's already taking damage. Gypsy's absolutely destroying this first push. Yeah, his own Marines kind of blocking his vultures from getting more kills there, and. Yeah, I gotta say, man, like, that's gonna be slight advantage here um, for uh, Gypsy. This barracks now is going to be given free reign, as funny as that sounds, to just kind of scout away, whereas uh, Medinho's own barracks going to be pushed off by the two Marines, obviously. Yeah, I th it is funny, like, we make the joke, like, whoever puts the CC down wins, but, like, really, like, the tiniest details matter in StarCraft. It's actually crazy. At this, especially yeah. at this level. And it is only tiny details once you get this good, like these guys, right? Like, they're so talented. Um, yeah. It's just a game of these little, you know, inches, little distances, little time advantages. Um, whoa, this is a little wild. We got a tank moving out here for Mr. Medinho. I don't know about this one, man. I don't know. My my simple Zerg brain is saying there's no way one tank's gonna be that threatening at this point. Yeah, but is he gonna be able to see it? Because he's hidden uh, the tank underneath Medinho's head. So uh, it is cloaked currently. Yeah, it is cloaked. Yeah, I, I didn't think of that. The that has a lot player of cameras are gonna end up blocking it. Yeah. And he Oh my god, yeah, there's no way! <laughs> oh, yeah, no. this gets caught. This is a big pickup here for Gypsy. Medina second Hulk's tank. gonna get a second tank too! It was rallied! Oh no. Yeah. Yeah, this That's is That's like every uh, unit now. Alright, Gypsy. This is gonna be map control. There's a chance that maybe. No. I don't know, it's man. Two Goliaths. Yeah. Gypsy's got to hit play on his theme song now and take the victory lap. Yeah, this is big, man. This is big, big damage. It's going to be tough for uh, Medina oh to really rally gosh. from here. All right, Another more Goliaths Goliath coming out. I mean, Goliaths fight well versus Vultures in numbers. So with this third Goliath coming in here, if he had some repair, yeah, I, I think maybe this is a big problem. But as is, he's, he's doing The missed good. shots, though. Did you see how long that Goliath lasted with like two HP? Yeah. What is going on today? Like the missed shots have been just going insane. Yeah, they've been pretty nuts. He does save a good amount of SCVs. In the wow. Game. I so actually perfect. can't believe that he's not just instantly dead. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he is gonna make this a game for sure. Natural not able to mine though, being uh, kind of a key factor in this. Whereas Gypsy, once again, uh, you know, is able to mine. He's reproducing his own barracks to, so he can uh, bolster his factory uh, count. Um, and he's just applying the pressure. Uh, you know, eventually, at least. Oh Ooh. man, I can't believe that mine connected. Yeah, Goliaths are so good at sniping him. Yeah, and he had a vulture like right there. It was just. Shh. A little too far away. Like, all right. Well, this CC is just getting just pummeled. Yeah. Yeah. It's why? Why wouldn't you lift here? Is my I guess my question. Uh, maybe it's kind of acting as a wall, so that the SCB yeah, be like the, micro the or whatever. Oh no. No. Tank coming up as well. This is yeah. All right. It's well, go it's time. go time, but it's not yeah. the best go time I've seen in a while. This siege tank got a. <laughs> Let's see. For a guy playing like a potato, <laughs> you're, you're doing call right. <laughs> Did he just call Gypsy a potato? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's a compliment. You know yeah, what I mean? He's I, like, I, I'm a potato. He means it the yeah. <laughs> like it's you're the also best. a potato. Compliment he could have given by yeah the highest the honor. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Medinho always graceful. Uh, will end up falling there to Big Jip, who's going to end up moving on to the round of 16. Man, no surprise there. I 
you know, I, I knew it was going to be a coin toss between him and uh, Zhao Schreier, or at least I felt that way uh, for this group. But man, both of those players uh, will end up making it on through this group E here. Uh, very impressive stuff, man. Yeah, uh, overall, pretty good. Uh, very, uh, I was expecting that to be a little bit more one-sided. I know that's kind of like a weird statement, but Gypsy just, I feel like Gypsy is in, he's like ascended fairly recently. Like he's like taking everything very seriously. He looks really strong. Um, so the fact that Medino took that game was pretty good, um, but he did win the last two fairly convincingly. Uh, so I am looking forward to seeing him some more in the upcoming game. So, but uh, yeah, I think that's it for us today. So, uh, before we go, guys, uh, Zero is trying to hit the donation goal for coming up here. So if you guys want to take some time and check out the Patreon, uh, that'd be really great. Uh, you know, uh, we do want to keep BSL funded and going for a very long time in the future here. So if you do uh, get your uh, Patreons, then you'll be on the, the shirt, which is cool. I did not know about this ahead of time, so I'm not on the one currently, which made me kind of sad. I was like, am I on there because I cast it? No, damn. But uh, it is a sick shirt, so I, I yeah, I'll be I'll plan be planning on getting my own. I actually like the hoodie a lot too. So, but uh, yeah, thank you all really for stopping by, guys, and thanks for uh, checking out the Patreon. Did you want to do a Patreon reader? Sure. Uh, yeah. So once again, wanted to, uh, you know, thank all of our Patreon supporters. Uh, at the bombastic general level, level. Uh, $100 a month. We have My Fleeting Dream, as usual. Thank you so much for your contributions each and every month. Uh, at the $50 a month level, we have Striker and Misters. Thank you so much. Uh, at the Major Plus level, uh, Plus Plus level, we have uh, Tim, Cause, and Tupocalypse. Uh, at the Bombastic Major level, we have Kevin, Yu Jang, uh, Medinho, Steven Robertson, Suricata, Machine, uh, Voltina Bulai, Gordon Bradley, KJ Streaming Channel, Daniel Lopez, LML, Nicholas Schuler, and Quark. And once again, just thank you to each and every single person that's donating, big or small. All of it goes a long way to uh, helping us continue BSL season after season. Um, you know, once again, like we really couldn't be doing this without you. If you like what you're seeing, uh, please continue to to donate and continue to make this happen uh, for all of us. So, yeah, we greatly appreciate you you folks uh, tuning in, sticking around season after season, and helping us uh, help and support us. So, thank you very much. And all right. With well, that, I guess that's Group E for today, man. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for reading those. I uh, definitely didn't intentionally make you pronounce all of them because I didn't want to. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks for having us on, Zero. Really appreciate uh, being here for you guys and uh, doing the cast. I hope you all had a good time, and we'll see you next time. Yeah, thanks again, Doc Holiday, and thank you, Zero. Uh, as always, man, I uh, really appreciate being part of this. And yeah, thanks all you for tuning in, and we will see you at the next one. Take it easy.